Look, when all things are equal, okay, same calorie diet, everything else being equal, training, sleep, all of it, a high protein diet is superior. Check this out. Studies show you'll have better glucose control. In other words, better insulin sensitivity, more muscle, less body fat. And then here's my favorite one, more satiety, meaning less hunger and cravings. Across the board, a high protein diet is superior. So don't let those media headlines fool you or confuse you. When all things are equal, healthy diet versus healthy diet, a high protein version is better across the board. What's your thoughts on this one today? Just, it's, uh, I think we need to continue to communicate this because protein containing foods continue to get demonized. Mm. And um, I think I don't think people quite realize the health benefits. In fact, uh, I didn't even mention this, longevity uh, is better with a high protein diet. Yeah. Uh, and studies were, you know, in the best uh, well-made studies. So I don't think the average person knows that protein is a healthy macronutrient to aim for. I think they know, well, yeah, bodybuilders like protein. Yeah, maybe it builds more muscle. They probably don't know it'll help them lose body fat. They probably don't know it'll control their hunger better. They definitely don't know that it'll control their blood sugar better or it's better for longevity. Those things are just not known. Um, and so, Isn't that interesting how like it's been promoted to us so long? Vegetables are a health food. Like that's like if you think of I'm eating healthy now. It's like it's always like the amount of consumption of vegetables that you're including in your diet, which is important, right? There's yep. you know there's a need from a lot of those nutrients and micronutrients and fiber and uh, you know they serve a purpose, but uh, nobody says like meat uh, as a health food. No. Do you, do you think, Sal? There's a correlation with a lot of the research and the studies that support what you're saying. With if you target a high protein diet, most likely you eat a a, a diet that is predominantly uh, meat in there in order to do that, and most meat is whole food, and that you naturally are eliminating processed food do you think that there is so that less of it has to do with like oh it's just because you're hitting your which we know the obviously yeah. the values of that right we we and there is i know there's research to obviously to support that but do you think that there might be uh, a high correlation with just the simple fact that if you eat a high protein diet most likely you're having to eat more whole foods than you are processed foods and so then you have this kind of carryover to satiety of fat loss, healthier, longevity, all, all the above? No, no. Um, th so for a while, we weren't sure what the correlations were or, or, or if they were actual like legit correlations. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, old studies showed that eating a lot of protein was connected to worse health. But really what they did is they didn't control for calories. And so people who eat the most calories ate more protein in those, uh, in those particular studies. I'm talking about the studies where they control everything. Literally, same calories, same calories, whole foods, whole foods. You eat uh, less protein, you eat more protein. So all things being equal, mm. the same calorie diet that's high protein results in more muscle and less body fat, okay? So even though they're both eating, let's say, 2,000 calories, more protein equaled more muscle and less body fat. But we also know that protein produces satiety, so you'll probably eat less calories if you really do chase protein. That's number one. Number two, like you said, Adam, uh, protein containing foods, or should, should we, I guess, speculate or say that the average person who eats a mostly processed food diet, the proteins that they get are often are from whole foods. There's not a whole lot of processed food uh, foods that are really high in protein. There's a high protein processed food market, but that's usually... Um, you know, that's usually sought out by consumers who tend to be either health conscious or muscle building conscious. Like go in the high protein processed food segment of any health food store or, or grocery store. And what you'll find is protein bars and protein pancakes. And they're all like kind of mo like pointing to or attracting like the health conscious individual. For the most part, people who aren't health conscious who eat heavily processed foods do so because convenience and taste and protein doesn't taste good or not as good as fats and carbs do. We know that, right? So if you're going to choose processed foods because of flavor and, and convenience, I'm not going to go with the, you know, whatever, low carb, high protein chip, if that exists. I'm going to go with the regular chip, right? I'm not going to go with the high protein mm. candy. 
I'm going to go with the regular candy or whatever, or pizza or, you know, pancakes. You ever have high protein pancakes? Like, yeah, they're okay, but the regular high, you know, non protein ones always taste a little more palatable. Would be Pork rinds would be sort of the right. like equivalent to chips. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of uh, options there for Doug protein. was actually eating chicken chips today. Yeah, I've had those. Yeah, huh. I've had those. They're actually pretty good. I, I just tried one. They're made with chicken, and I think uh, they add cassava flour to them. So there's some carbs, but it's all it's it's a lot of protein. Actually, I think these are 100 percent chicken. Just chicken. Mm-hmm. I think. What? Are you sure? Because I had some. He Look them up. Chicken. Yeah, you had the wrapper, right? You just had them. I threw the oh. wrapper away. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was just eating. Them this the whole morning. bag's like 40 grams of protein, and it's and low calorie, like 100 calories, right? Yeah, 100 calories. Yeah, uh, 14 like, grams. Protein. 14 grams of protein, mm-hmm. 100 calories. Yeah. That's yeah. a really Interesting. good rate. But it, okay, but hold on. But th- like, think of the average person. Forget us, because we're like, oh, cool, I'll try it, right? Oh, yeah, they won't. Th- <laughs> yeah. Oh, they think it tastes terrible. The average person, I mean, like, it's like you, you hear the people yeah. that have been Hey, you giving- want some chips? These are chicken chips. Have you, did, <laughs> you see, you know? did you see our yeah. forum backlash on your on your, your chocolate donuts comments? Stupid. Like that? There was only like a couple people. A lot of people agreed that it was yeah, so good. Yeah, I know. I mean, I agree too. But there's always somebody like when you say things, I can always tell. When someone comments on when we recommend like I'm a, a true chocolate donut connoisseur. No, wh- wh- what? what <laughs> you can always tell how you can you always tell how me. fucked up their diet is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's like how like you, because they literally if eat you chocolate eat, donuts if you a lot. choose to eat whole foods, you know, ninety percent of the time, or you've been, you know, you're really good at eating, you know, quote unquote clean, and then you get introduced to some of these, you know, treats as I would think of them as like you know a chocolate donut flavored type of protein powder. You're like, oh wow, this tastes really good. If you're the opposite. It, like the people too that hate on like magic spoon like, oh my god this is terrible he's like oh of course it is because you eat fucking regular <laughs> cereal and chocolate donuts well, the, all the time yeah. so to you it's like it tastes yeah. nothing Your like palate's a little skewed yeah, yeah. it is yeah and, con- and by the way this, context matters right? by the yeah. way this is coming from a place i like and the reason why i can speak to that is like i was the same way like i remember yeah. feeling that way about fruit and vegetables and people talking about oh Make this recipe. And I'm like, oh, this is terrible. Yeah. yeah. Well, my diet was full of like. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not going to fool me with a protein shake and actual milkshake or ice cream shake or something. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm going to know. So I had the same conversation with my kids about uh, when we were trying to just drink some of those mineral waters that have like a little bit of like a fart of flavor on it. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> and I'm just like, I like it, you know? And they're like, ugh, because they're drinking like, they're equating it to Sprite. And I'm like, it's it's not even the same universe as that. Like you have to first do like scale yourself down, go like Zevia, get some like, you know, Stevia and then like kind of work your way way towards like not having all of this sugar that you're drinking now here's what's cool though i believe the opposite is true and trainable meaning like once you have like my son is a perfect example of what we're watching unfold right now of being so consistent with not allowing these things that if you give him like a taste of like a a soda or something that's like got like sugar like high overwhelming right it's overwhelming and he prefers the things that says other people would be bland and dry, but that's like a massive treat for him. So he would prefer us. So we've done all the the healthier choices his whole life. Like even a treat that we would do would be like our, you know, protein peanut butter ball or things like that. And so he's been, his palate has been trained for that. What someone else would call it a dull, boring, sweet, like magic spoon. Like that's the only cereal my son has had is magic spoon. So if you were to give him like a bowl of lucky charms or, or, or one of the, you know, frosted flake, it's too much. Yeah. He don't like it. Have him, have him eat it though. A bunch of times in a row. Then, he'll, he then his palate will tra- change. Yep. That's what I mean. And I've watched this firsthand when I've, I've been totally. on a diet for a long time. I introduce something that is processed or not very good. And then I keep doing it. And then before long, it changes and then, then all of a sudden I crave it. It's wild guys- to watch that. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We also have a sale going on this month. MAPS Bands is half off and the Hard Gainer Bundle, half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. You guys remember... Mm. Uh, that doc was a, it was like a documentary, uh, Super Size Me. Yeah. Where oh, the guy just ate McDonald's every day. Every day. That's all he ate. Yeah. Just to, and remember, he said, like, at first, he was like, oh, it's kind of like whatever. But then he started to crave it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he's like, oh my God, I feel terrible, but I want more of it. I still want more of it. I mean, that's what'll happen yep. because they're so well designed. They're literally hitting your brain with drug like effects. 
Didn't he do that experiment again? I feel like he did another documentary did. follow-up. I think he, <laughs> like, did. Wow. he did do another one, but I don't remember. What, I feel so bad for Find McDonald's. That out, what was the second I know, one? I know McDonald's you know what, gets picked on a lot. I do. But. You know why they get picked on? Because they're on the top, right? They're the biggest food chain. Yeah. And fast food. But the reality is they're, they're all like that. They're not, though, anymore. Well, they used to be. I mean, right? the, the, they're, like, they're, they're like iconic. Process. They haven't yeah. been for a long time, though. But they're iconic. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're iconic. Like like Burger King just kind of skates underneath them. You're like, yeah. You take all the heat. Eat, dude, <laughs> we're cool. Yeah, we're good. yeah, like somebody could literally do that documentary again with uh, Burger King or even In and Out, Taco which, Bell, dude. Oh, oh the, there's part two, right? Super Size Me Two. What did he do on the second one with chicken? With chicken, it looks like. Oh, fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could do that with fried chicken. I mean, I you could do that with any his, fast what food. His, what was his? What was uh, what was his desired outcome? The second one, he just the same thing, right? Let's see how much weight I gain. How shitty I it feel. was. Exact same concept, probably. I don't no, know. No, there's got to be something different. No, I it's bet called that's what Pay it is, Attention dude. to Me Too. Pay yeah. Attention to Me read, Too. Read the read what it says about it, Doug. What what was uh, what was the explores? The point? It says explores what? Yeah. What, uh, yeah, so it's a sequel to his first one, obviously. It explores the ways in which the fast food industry has rebranded itself as healthier since his original film. Uh, oh, so he's just uh, like, okay, now uh, I'm going to Well, choose. I remember. Okay. I, don't you guys remember that? I'll never forget the first time. <laughs> they <laughs> like, stopped, you know, hey, they, when I was a trainer, I used to get KFC, like early on, like oh. thinking that like it was a good choice because of the high protein. If you actually looked at like- There's more fat than protein. Yes, right? it's and yeah. it's it's worse for you than like a Big Mac. Totally. Yeah. And I, I and remember that like- fats too. Remember, yeah. we didn't have any of these like great calorie things. Like I'd get, I got, I remember, I'll never forget getting in my Calorie King book. Same. And, and then looking yeah. at KFC <laughs> and going like, what am I Shock. doing? Yeah. yeah, I should get a Big Mac then. And how funny is that? That's the logic. That's how, even as a trainer, yeah. that's how my brain, I was eating KFC for a period of time, thinking that I was <laughs> making a better choice. Open the book, recognize it. This highlights your point that you make about uh, how calorie, uh, showing people their calories don't make sense. No. You know what it does to me? It doesn't make me go, oh, I shouldn't have KFC. Yeah. It makes me go, oh, I may as well have the Big Mac instead. Yeah, yeah. It's only a couple hundred yeah, calories it's more. Like a, it's actually a couple hundred calories less, and I get as much protein. Yeah. That was literally the logic behind God, it. I told you guys my, why I can't eat KFC, right? I ruined it for myself. So, yeah. you know, the club we all managed that was next to that KFC? Yeah. Right over there. I used yeah, to yeah. like KFC. Me and my, so my fitness manager, myself, and another trainer. So DJ, uh, Ryan, you guys know both of them, and then myself went mm -hmm. on this, like, we made a bet. Let's see who could bulk the most over the next 60 days. And we all worked out together too. Now, you know, they, I think underestimated just how powerful my insecurity is. <laughs> Cause I didn't just want to win this contest. There was also that driving it. Right. Yeah. So I went nuts. I, so I got up to 240 pounds and at one, Oh, that's what that started that bro. Like, I, I was so like right now I weigh about 212. Like, okay. So imagine me 240 walking bloat. I was a literal meatball. Yeah. Okay. Strong as hell. Body fat was way high though. And I'll, I, I'll never forget, there was one meal where I was like, oh, crap, I lost, you know, because you lose a pound because you lose water or something like that. I'm like, I got, I got to win this contest. I got a family-sized bucket of KFC, yeah. and I ate the whole thing. Yeah. And then, <laughs> it's gross, but I smelled like chicken for like two days. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> like, yeah, people were I like. I believe it, dude. People yeah. like, you smell like, did you just eat? I'm like, I ate it two days ago. Sweating out your dude, pores. Oh, I can't <laughs> eat it no more. I believe it. My roommate in college, like, he ate. Uh, they, they, they literally had like chicken wings for an entire party of like 50 people okay, and me. nobody ate all the chicken wings. I mean, there was just way too many. And so <laughs> I, I went to pick him up cause like he was, he was there bouncing and, and him and my other friend were up there just eating, eating, eating. And there was a stack of chicken bones like this high. <laughs> And literally, like, smelled like chicken for three days. <laughs> so what? So gross. what? What is it? What is it that Butcher Box is doing with the chicken nuggets for it not to be in that KFC category? Then is it because they're just breading it and they're not deep frying it? Yeah. Like, why is it way less on the on the fat? It's the oil. It's what they use in the batter. Because um, I tell you what, that's a home run. They're yeah. They're oh, they're formula. Now, 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 formula to be clear, point. the macros on the nuggets are not going to be as good as like a chicken thigh or breast. No, of course not. But I have yet to find a nugget, <laughs> whatever a nugget is. And I was like, where's the it nugget is, on the chicken? It's a gizzard. I, I have yet to find a nugget. Now, you know how they make that, that right? That tastes that good. So I'm, I'm they curious, take all the meat and chicken they smash it all together. And bones and cartilage, everything. And they it's blend bone it broth, bro. Yeah, natural yeah. Uh, yeah, then, then they, collagen protein. 
But I don't know. Like, so what would be interesting is to know if Butcher Box doesn't do that because it doesn't taste like that. It does not taste like that gummy, no, yeah. like McDonald's chicken nuggets. How they make? I it. mean, everything they do is health conscious, yeah. which is why I, I'm so surprised with uh, how good like those nuggets taste. It's yeah. actually the best I've never had a. Frozen. No, they're phenomenal. Yeah, and yeah. It I passes mean, they, the kid taste test too, man. Oh, like my, in if comparison, I, like, if I eat them and critical. My, my son sees them, he gets mad. Yeah. You're eating them again. Oh, oh shit. Because the others will run out, you know? Did you see that? Did <laughs> you see so the good. meme that Chokey posted? No. Oh, you didn't see it? No, yeah. no it's on the main IG. That. Yeah. This guy doesn't. Is it pay. me? No, no. It's just. Oh. It's literally. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. I did see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She posted that because of all the parents that now we've got that are eating the, their kids' chicken nuggets right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Insane, so. yeah. No, but, th but these, uh, um, you know, protein has been, at first, it was kind of demonized. Not, it's not explicitly demonized, by the way. Although there are some people who do explicitly try to demonize protein through really bad science, but that hasn't got any steam. But what has happened is they've sideways uh, demonized protein by attaching it to um, animal foods are bad for you. It used to be saturated fat. Now it's the, it's bad for the climate. Uh, don't eat animals type of deal. Plants are better for you. And so it's kind of like uh, um, attached to demonization of other things and so people are not prioritizing the bottom line is if you eat if you aim for your target body weight and protein you will eat less calories and you'll be leaner and you'll have more muscle and you'll feel better that's yeah. just a fact and most of the ways that you'll get the protein will be through whole foods you could definitely do through protein powders that doesn't really count uh the same it does count but it's not the same thing in terms of uh, like the satiety, you're not going to get the same satiety. It's funny from how much well. easier it makes. Yeah, uh, yeah like cutting and, and restricting um, calories. Like it's just like so much easier once you like fill up and you, you get that. It's so like, easy. It's so feeling. easy that people actually run the risk of not being able to eat enough. If yeah, they eat, it's fact. Try it. Most people are like I can't eat my calories. When I also eat well, my protein. we just for the audience, where they it won't be out yet, but I know it's coming soon. We just had a great conversation with Sean Stevenson. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. and uh, you know, the classic example of somebody who's been doing this as long as we have or longer, and trained and been in, been in the trenches with everyday people forever. What were the two things? That, that like he distilled down like talking to his clients about mm -hmm. was hitting the protein and taking sleep sleep yeah, yeah. so like literally and I made the because of all the other things it affects I mean I made that comment in the in the interview you'll hear it when it comes out spoiler alert it literally if you're listening to this right now and you've got family or friends or you yourself are struggling on where to start with you like two things focus on getting good sleep so put together a sleep routine some good habits and behaviors, going to bed earlier, shutting yeah. TV up, whatever that is, okay? Eating two hours before bed instead of right before bed or in bed, like make an effort to significantly improve your your quality of sleep, getting better sleep and hit your protein intake. Don't do anything else. Mm -hmm. Like Literally just hone in on those two things and I I bet you- you. It's because of all the other dominoes you that will, are affected. Exactly. Yeah. You will, and then- the very next thing after that, add a little bit of resistance training. Just a little. Don't go yeah. crazy. Add a couple it days in. It almost like wipes your slate clean so you can actually start like painting again. Dude, yeah. it is if if It took most me 10 years people, to figure that out. I know, me too. If most people just focused on that, hit your protein intake, get better sleep than what you're used to, and then when you're ready, the third step, add some resistance training in there two to three times a week full body. It'll it would radically change your life. Hundred percent, so crazy. Doug brought that. up the ingredients, but I think you scroll up, Doug, so we can see the ingredients. To the it's all organic. It's all stuff stuff we you know what it is like chicken breast with rib meat, water, organic rice flour, organic yellow corn flour, organic corn meal, um, and then like corn starch. Which is that powder. basically oh, that's wow. the that's yeah. the uh, that's it. Everything else is less legit. than two percent. So it's pretty straightforward. You know the thing that really people need to pay free. the thing that people need to pay attention to when they when they're aiming for protein, if they are um, if they do have one of those polymorphisms that respond uh, poorly to certain types of fats, uh, or if you just eat a lot of red meat, is just eat grass fed meat that handles it. Like grass fed meat, the 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 fatty acid profile is really good. Yeah, and if you I eat I eat at least a pound of red meat a day. And it's, it's grass-fed meat. Yeah. It makes a difference. That's pretty much it. I mean, get your protein. And if you're, like I said, if you're, if you've got one of those polymorphisms or saturated fats affect your cholesterol in ways that are not so great, go grass-fed and you're going to be okay. 
I mean, that's just the bottom line. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I, mean, I, it's I just made it a habit of like trying to make, when I make my food at home, although I will admit lately I've been going down to the butcher and getting some really corn fed, grass, grain fed. Isn't that funny? Of, oh, how much more palatable it oh, is? Oh God. It's like, isn't that weird? It is. It's, I know. it's radically different for sure. <laughs> I mean, butcher box really nailed it with like being able to make grass fed tasty meat. Cause I think they do it better than anybody else by far. But again, there's another classic example of something we talk about. Like we tell people, oh, it's, you know, it's, they do a great job. So people go buy it and they think they're going to, it's going to taste like a, you know, grain, <laughs> grain fed cow. That's like, you know, marbled fat, like crazy. And it's like, no, it's going to taste leaner. It's just not going to taste the same. No. Like that's what you know, you're expecting. It. You know, what's crazy. interesting is our cravings uh, were really the result of, of thousands and thousands of years of evolution. And it, they drove us to seek out certain flavors and textures because they came with important nutrients. And our drive to get them is also influenced by the difficulty of getting them, okay? So if we did not have this strong drive for, let's say, fat and meat, uh, we probably wouldn't hunt as much because it's dangerous. It's dangerous, it's hard. You got to chase an animal, you might get killed type of deal. Um, plants, that deposit their seeds through our digest our digestive system. You know, they evolved producing fruit that tastes really good. We also craved uh, sugar because it was rare. Sugar is actually quite rare in nature. You'll find uh, tribes will, <laughs> will, will go to beehives and go through crazy extents to get honey mm. because sugar is hard to come by. And why did you crave it? Why do we like sugar so much? It's super energy in the real world, not this world that we've designed for ourselves with agriculture and all that stuff in the real world, when you're out in the woods and you're living that way and you encounter a little bit of sugar, it's yeah, you're going to want it. Of course you, know, you are, but point, it's rare. You ain't yeah. going to find pounds of sugar. The point you're nature. making right now, the point you're making right now, I think is the best case or the best argument for why there's value in uh, more small meals throughout the day. I think that when we have these longer periods of time, where you don't eat something, those alarms and natural signals get louder. And I think that that's part of the, ch and that makes it more challenging for someone to make a healthier, better choice than just going to the craving. Whereas if I'm, if I constantly am letting myself get a small meal every two, three hours, I don't feel like those alarms are as loud. I know a lot of people are like that. But some, some people are the opposite. Um, if really? I, yeah. If I fast, I, my appetite starts to go away. Actually I can, if I fast long, okay, so yes, yeah, yes and no. Okay intentionally fasting different point. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how most people live, which is, you know, they have these, you they know, just wait. Yeah. They just, well, unintentionally, yeah. most people, life happens is what happens. Most of us have trained ourselves that you have breakfast in the morning, yeah. you have a lunch and then you probably have a snack and the dinner. If all things go well, but then what happens to a lot of people is they get busy at work or something. And then that, three hour when they four hour point when they normally would have something it gets it gets beyond that and then when they finally get to a meal they're all those cravings have been kicking up yeah. and they overindulge versus having small meals planned out to where they're kind of like grazing, grazing. all day you know what's now, hard if you about intentionally that? Yeah. fast and you have the mindset of i'm not eating till three or four in the afternoon totally different because you know why is that like 10 11 you go through those same things too but you've already told yourself i'm not eating all the way till then and then it and then it passes. And you know what's you know what's tough about that? What you're saying that would that's so hard to control because when people eat small meals, let's say they eat four or five times a day instead of two or three, they're probably going to eat more uh, processed food meals yeah. Carbs, because they're convenient. Too. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, 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 protein's hard to yeah to kind of like they would have to really meal snack prep. on. You know yeah. what I mean? Because otherwise, this is why like, I was always such a fan of it though for my clients. Yeah. Because otherwise, what are you going to do? Right? You're going to be oh, I want you to eat five meals a day. This is what people will do. Okay, cool. I'll eat. Uh, I'll eat lunch and dinner. Breakfast is this package thing, and then my snacks are these bars or package things, and those are my snacks. Type of I mean, thing. I always found there no, nobody's going to. I always found getting my clients to have Tupperware two now. two meal two prep meals in the middle of the day done easy. If you're you're pretty disciplined, you could. You could have a, a, and you can do either one heating up, like I've recommended on the podcast before. You could do things like, you know, creatures of habit, oatmeal or a magic spoon cereal. So those are quick and easy, like protein sources. So you have your breakfast, like easy like that. And then it's midday. So it's either whenever you eat around 11 or noon mm -hmm. time. And then again, around, you know, two to four range or like that, that where people, I feel like either one, they skip unintentionally and then dinner, they've 
overindulge because they are mm-hmm. they got so they feel so hungry in that that time period or they, they go eat but they do something drive through fast because they don't have a lot of time mm-hmm. they didn't have anything prepped so having two meals a day either prepped or this is where i think there's i mean we've had it just the planning alone right just yep. to be just because you're planning yep. you know rather than like the day you know the day is running you you're running the day that alone makes a huge difference you know why too when you're planning for the next day or two days later, you're typically more in this like conscious, yeah. self-aware state versus like in the moment. I know oh, I probably should eat healthy, but I'm hungry right now. Let me I mean, there's that. an argument for that too, Sal, that it's a lot of it, maybe half of it has to do not just that you simply have a meal, but that you're conscious, totally. that you're just aware. Totally. Mm-hmm. That because you are making the effort to to prep it and do that, you're 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 more aware and more likely to- You know, there's studies on that, right? Where you're, you're better- at how your future self should be, the further away it is. In other words, when people set goals, the further the goal is, the more like ambitious and like, yeah, I could totally do that. You know, like, do you think you could write this? Would you be able to do this this project? Uh, but, you know, I want you to do it down the line. Yeah. So if you tell someone, can you eat healthy on Thursday and prep your meals now? They're like, yeah, I know what healthy is. And they'll put it together. I'm like, oh yeah, this will be good. Mm-hmm. But if you're like, hey, can you eat healthy right now? Ooh, that's going to be, <laughs> that's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dude. did you, did you ever watch that video I sent you uh, about repairing after arguments and stuff? It was that, that woman. Yeah, I sent it to Beck. every family member. How amazing friend, is that? Amazing. So, I sent it to every, everybody in my family to listen to because not only it's the, the what's wrong with it is it's titled like for parents, but it's like, 101 on how to repair any relationship. I think every married couple or anybody in a relationship with yeah. another person should watch it because it's incredibly powerful. The repair is everything. In other words, uh, the story you tell yourself about what happened can be radically altered with the repair. So she uses the example where she says, you know, think of your parents and maybe you have a bad relationship with them. Imagine now if your mom called you and said, hey, I know I wasn't the best mom when you were a kid. I had a really tough time. I was young, inexperienced. I know it was really rough for you. I'm really sorry. Like how that would change, it wouldn't fix everything, right? But it would change quite a bit about how well, you view the whole thing. It's and not, it's not even a question. Perspective. For, the reason why I said it to my sister is because that is the greatest challenge that we have with our mother. Hmm. Was not. It's less about what happened. I mean, fucking forty years old. Okay, the thing. I'm, and I've talked about how I'm grateful for the stuff we went through. The hardest part that we've had as adults in our relationship with her is that that's the part where she's struggled with mm. is just saying, I'm sorry, I fucked up. I did a bad job. It's just, uh, there's always an excuse. There's always a reason, yeah. or there's always somebody else who had it worse than us as the, the there's, she's always had this reasoning behind it. It's like, and all my sister and I, I think I ever, ever wanted as a kid was our mom to go like, man, I did a, I did a bad job. That was hard. Vers- yeah, yeah. Versus always justifying why or saying that it could be worse or yeah. all these other things like that. I, and so of course that, that hit home for me, like on how much as a, I know what it's like to be the kid and to feel that. And so very, very mindful of that with my son and how we're going to, and totally. then also even with uh, Katrina, like uh, I think that's why I think it's so valuable, not just for parenting. I think that we're all humans. We all get um, emotional and irrational in, in, in the, in the moment and say things that we regret or do things that we regret. Totally. And one of the most powerful things that you can do in that situation is to to own it right afterwards and be like, man, I, I fucked up. That so was- she, yeah, so she has a whole course and I've, I've been on it for a while and she talks about how powerful this is for kids. So like, look, as a parent, you're going to snap. You're not going to be perfect. Just fact, okay? It's just what happens. But when afterwards, when you've calmed down, you know what happened. Ooh, I yelled at my kid. Ooh, I did that thing. They saw me, whatever. You go up to them and you you bring it up. You talk about it. And not like this. This was cool because she says this too. It's like, you don't go up to your kid and be like, hey, look. Hey, buddy, I'm really sorry I yelled at you, but you know, you did that thing that made me yell. She's like, no, no, no that's not the same thing. Yeah. You go up to him and be like, hey, uh, I yelled. I lost control. I got really upset and I lost control. And that was probably scary for you. I'm sorry. Boy, so I, I've tried some of this. Yeah. And Jessica's really good at, at this with the kids. And man, does it make the kids emotionally intelligent, self-aware, and it cha- it, it changes everything. Espe- especially if you argue with your spouse or whatever in front of your kids. And then afterwards you tell the kids, that was probably a little scary for you. Mom and dad, you know, sometimes we lose control. It's really it's really hard. I'm sorry that you had to see that. Right, or whatever. Right. Then the kid all of a sudden is like, it's okay. Like, I know, you know, things can be hard. And then when they do something, 
I'll see this with my son. He'll do something and afterwards he'll come and he'll bring the repair and the apology, like the self-awareness. It's really remarkable. So it's, a, it's a really good video. You have to watch it. In fact, that should be the shout out today because I think that you should go check out that, that YouTube video for sure. The hardest part and the part that, and I've seen this play out, and I'm so glad in the video she does the example, is people have the, the right intentions that oh, I, I need to go repair that but they still are emotionally broken over it or they still have their or issue. they feel it. like it, it invalidates the, how they felt. That's right, or, that's right. So then when they communicate it, they still pull that bullshit where they yeah. go like, you know, I'm sorry that, you know. Yeah, but I wouldn't but, have had you. you know, there's this but, you yeah. know, you yelled at me or, you know, you did do this thing. Like yeah. you still circle back around and justify yeah. your behaviors and feelings, even though you think you're apologizing and reconciling, you're really not. And that is the, that's where the, the goal is. The goal is, can you in a situation like that, no matter how wrong the other person is, can you take full ownership of your own emotions, reactions, and how you handle the situation, no matter how wrong they were, and own that and apologize? Yeah, exactly. Because I think that's, the, that's the, hard the and fear powerful. is I'm going to give them this thing, and then they're not going to apologize back. Well, that might not happen. I actually had this conversation with my oldest son. And he's in college right now and he's having some challenges with certain people. And, and I said, you got, he, and he has these assumptions, right? And I'm like, you got to give people the chance to be assholes or good, but you got to give them the chance. You can't assume that they're going to be an asshole. And then if they are, you know what your boundaries are, you know what you're playing, you, you know what the game is. So if you go up to somebody, like you said, Adam, you say, Hey, look, I, I totally lost control. I'm, I'm really sorry. It probably sucked to be around. And then the person doesn't own their side. That's Okay. You just know, you know where things stand. You understand the boundaries, but you got to give them the chance to be like, maybe they apologize back. Maybe they don't, but you're not going to give it to them. You can't force them. I can't go up to them and be like, Hey, look, I'm sorry, but you're sorry too. Right. You know, that's essentially what people are saying. So like, you know that <laughs> you know? I think I told, I don't think I talked about this on air, but I told you guys that I had like this, uh, in my Hampton group, right. The, the group that I'm a part of, like mm -hmm. I had my, my superpower. Like, so each of us have been like nominated for like our superpowers and what you do. And mine was relationship building. One of the thing, one of the key hacks when people are asking me like how I've developed a lot of these relationships is that I've trained myself to actually always default to giving people the benefit of the doubt. Mm. Meaning that they did something wrong, they're a relationship trying to build, and I in my head, instead of right away thinking of all the like, oh my God, the deceit, they're probably doing this and that, yeah, is yeah, I, yeah. I spin it to like, well, you know, maybe they meant for it to come this way. And like, I always sure. will think of the, they have the best intentions until you prove me completely yeah, wrong, yeah, right? Yeah. And that has served me because we're all human. We all get emotional. We all react. We all tell our own story in our head. And if you take a first impression, which not everybody's great at first impressions, and you automatically judge that person, their whole character, based off of an isolated yeah. scenario or interaction they've had with you or another person, very difficult to build all these relationships with people uh -huh. because that happens all the time. And so that's a, a hack that I, I've had to train myself to do. Is, it doesn't mean you don't have boundaries either. And yeah, it doesn't Someone mean might I, be like, you know, oh, well, then you're going to let people walk all over you. No. no. And you know that about me. I'm yeah. like, that. I'm definitely not that person. No, no, no. no, no I'll definitely no. cut someone's throat. Yeah. I'm, whoa, definitely, whoa. I'm definitely that <laughs> person <laughs> who, but that's I, part of what makes me that way is because of that, because I, I've given you already the benefit of the doubt and then you've still come back and you've proven me that this is who you are. This yeah. is your character. And so that now, now we're done. You're yeah, like now, yeah. because I know I didn't judge you at the, out the gates. In fact, I gave you a lot of grace, but you've now proven me that that is who you are. Yeah. And so then now yeah, we're not going to have a relationship. Yeah. So. so this is, so just needless to say, this is good stuff for me to watch. Cause you know, we're moving right now and that's, very stressful. <laughs> well, it's one of the most stressful things. Isn't it wild? Even though you guys have, you've basically contracted out all the labor and you work. Still gotta put it's still, it's still you still got to put It's still stressful. It's still And, you know, things are all over the place and my clothes are here and that's over there. And, you know, you got to figure things out. It's a new neighborhood. It's a new area. It's all unnerving, I think would be the right, the right word. I hate it. Oh, mm -hmm. I hate it. But yeah, I did. I had people move stuff too. I yeah. still hate it. Still, still not fun. It still sucks. I know. Dude, right? yesterday I went to go use, they have an outside grill. You know, and I went to go. So I'm not a good, I'm not like you and you and Doug and even Justin, you guys are great at grilling. I am not. So I bought these nice steaks. I'm like, I'm going to do a good job. I'm going to do a good job this time. I got to get, I got a nice outdoor grill. I had my parents over. I flamed the shit out of them, man. Charcoal. Kim, it's just made little charcoal pieces of meat. I'm so mad. <laughs> Jessica was trying to be nice to me. Oh no, they're good. You know, she's eating. Oh no, it's still good. I'm like, babe, no, it's not. 
It's not good. You, so can, what, what, you can write on the sidewalk with that. What do they say about that? What do they say about how you just said that? It's like how you frame it so important, right? You said, I'm terrible at that. You got to get rid of the first thing yeah. saying. It's like, I could be much better at grilling yeah, if, I, right. if I practice more, right? Yeah. <laughs> Versus saying, I'm, I'm bad at grilling. I'm working on grilling. Yeah, quit identifying as a terrible griller. You know? <laughs> or, or I should say, this is why you should grill, honey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's the one. That's, that's I mean, the ultimate like husband. I hack. bro, I don't I don't care <laughs> how long things. you've been yeah, doing it. You still it. so I mean, I screwed my steak up yesterday. I was so mad. I was so mad. Like I'm always. Uh, how do you stop the? Oh, you know, I got you know what it is. I didn't like do do a good job. I didn't clean it first, right? Because otherwise it'll flare. Yeah, I mean, I Katrina likes that, right? Well, yeah, but she's and, she's easy to make a stay for. And yeah, I, well, yeah, she, yeah, 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 she is. You know what? So uh, what I screw up always is my steak trying to make her her perfect <laughs> burnt steak. So I'm always trying to time dinner. You know what I'm saying? So they hit right, and I'm like a medium rare to medium yeah. guy, and she's a well done ruined beef jerky person. And so I'm always like <laughs> the the time Hers difference on the bottom and yours like way up. At yeah, the top, and I right? like to slow cook. So imagine if you slow cook and you have that much discrepancy, yeah. her steak's an hour and a half later. So you just, so I'm always trying to figure out like how to time hers because I want her to have the best experience for her steak all the time. And I, meanwhile, I ruined my steak all the time because Damn. I'm trying to figure hers yeah. out. How did so, you guys, did you guys all have a good weekend? Did you do anything? Yeah. I mean, I was just watching, um, basically flag football all weekend. Who's playing flag Who's football? Playing flag football? Uh, Ethan. Oh, cool. Yeah. So he, I mean, they had their first game and they did well, like they have a good team and I'm, I got roped into coaching a bit too. So what? it's one of those things that just like, I just, me standing, I can't just sit and watch. Like everybody knows me in the Valley and like we, you know, I grew up there. Are you like a local celebrity? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I mean, that's weird to think about, but it's like, yeah, we, we had like that team was like the, the team where everybody talks so about. So yes. it's kind of like, yes. it's kind of like that. It's <laughs> just the, the, the superhero. But the football hero. Yeah. He's like, I never, he's like, I never signed more than three autographs at a, at a kid's <laughs> practice. So I wouldn't like, say that. Every gas station. station I mean, obviously like, if Tom Cruise was there, there'd be yeah. a lot more. Oh, oh, they got my Jersey in every gas station. It's not a big deal, dude. <laughs> Oh, that's you know, Andrews 24? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that yeah, punt yeah, yeah. return you did yeah, was incredible. 30, 36. Yeah. <laughs> what was it, 36? Uh, yeah, 36. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so I'm like there, and I'm, I'm helping out, and I can't help it. Uh, I get involved. But uh, he, he did great. It, it's interesting to watch him now kind of doing conventional sports, you know, from that transition. Oh, yeah. Uh, and to see, like, his movement, because – He's he's definitely uh man, he's progressed like crazy with the way he can throw the ball, he can move, he can catch and all that. He's just, you know, still has to work on the running and stuff. And I'm trying to kind of so I, I got in a little bit of like I was getting frustrated because this kind of brought back a lot of things I'm seeing from the whole landscape out there in terms of like kids and like just their overall resilience. Um <laughs> And it's, it's like one little thing. Like we had like a couple kids just like, Oh, you know, Oh, my knee and like, Oh, my, my wrist. And, and, and you know, and even Ethan kind of caught that. It was like, Oh, my ankle. And, and so I'm like, I had to like bust out the old story, you know, as we're walking and I'm like uphill both ways. I'm telling him, I'm oh, telling him about when this is when you had the flesh eating bacteria. Yes. Like, oh, I yeah, brought this bro. up on the podcast this a long time ago, up, but I just, I was laughing about it because like me and Courtney, Courtney has a pretty great story too about like, like, listen, you, we have to like teach these kids how to be fucking tough. Like who is out there teaching kids how to be tough anymore? Mm. Nobody. No. It's, it's embarrassing. That's my little rant. Um, so here's my story. Okay. I stepped on a nail. Um, and now how old are you? Paint the picture here. Okay. So I was like, I was, I was 12. No, I was 11. Uh, I was 11. Yeah. yeah little guy. Little guy. I, I step on the nail. I do the whole thing where you, you, you go do the Epsom salt bath and this was supposed to cure everything in the eighties, right? You just Epsom salt <laughs> Bath everything, Robitussin. Yeah, Robitussin, Robitussin and, it. and Epsom salt. <laughs> Sit in the Epsom salt, <laughs> soak it out. That's the, that's the 80s, Drink right? Some there, seven sure. up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little seven up, some soda crackers are fine. Just get, get on the bus, yeah. you know, <laughs> stop being a little bitch. Yeah, I'm like, okay. So it healed the next day, like the wound itself was kind of healing. And I, I put my shoe on and I go to school and I'm walking on it all day. It's not feeling good. It's irritated. It's inflamed. I believe I. To that point, I'm telling my parents, I'm like, I don't know. It doesn't feel any better. It hurts a lot. And, and they're like, ah, oh, just walk it off. Walk it off. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean anyway? Walk something off. <laughs> and I don't know. Oh, my like, head hurts. It's just going to go away. Eventually, like, you'll be fine. Yeah, There's it, some science to that. Blood, oxygen, yeah, nutrients right, right. circulating. Right. Yeah. 
And so I'm like, okay, I, I didn't know you. I only know is like what my parents tell me. Like, I'm like, okay, I guess this pain's going to go away. And so I'm walking to school. It really hurts. Um, I'm trying to do recess. I can't, like, I was real big into kickball. Couldn't even like stand up. I started sitting down. My friends are like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, ah, my foot's killing me. Got to the point where my foot just blew up like a beach ball. Like I couldn't, I had to take my shoe off uh, basically almost to the point where I was gonna have to cut my shoe off because it was expanding so fast. And my foot was just like this. These are all, these are all terrible. Pus filled beach ball. <laughs> these are terrible signs, by the way. Yeah. That you need to go to the hospital. And I'm still walking on it. Nobody. And I'm, I'm just like thinking back. I'm laughing fever? with Courtney talk and I'm telling this story in front of Ethan and, and, you know, and like, and he's, you know, rubbing his little ankle or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, so I, I, I basically had, I got back on the bus and I'm like, and no adult, like, I'm like, no adult had any good advice for me. And, and I'm just like, they're like, oh yeah, you know, hopefully that, that works itself out, you know? <laughs> okay. You know, and, and I'm on the bus and I have my shoe off and I have my huge, like inflamed, like pus filled foot. Uh, and to the point where I get off the bus, I, I get to the bus stop and my friends just like, because I was so slow, they just dispersed and went, <laughs> just left, <laughs> just left, <laughs> went to their houses. You're all sad. I'm just our... like, just ooh, like Quasimodo, you know, like just limping my way back to home. <laughs> I had, I had a, a, like a half a mile I had to get to my house and it was all uphill and it was this really steep hill. <laughs> I got to the point where it hurt so bad. I just broke down and I had, I started crawling and I crawl. On my wow, hands and knees. I don't remember this part of this. this you is crawl. Is this like the story I'm, he's building? Like, no, that's, that's, why, it, it's yeah. that's, that's why it's hilarious. You didn't exaggerate. That's why it's hilarious to me. I was, think, I was thinking about, I was crawling. I just did. I just did what I could to get home. Like I wasn't oh like God. thinking like this is ridiculous or anything. He's like, I still wasn't crying to his kid. No, I wasn't <laughs> crying. I'm just crawling. I'm getting back and I, and I finally make it home. And then I'm like, I don't know. Like there's something wrong, you know, I'm like telling my parents and then finally look at them like, Whoa, Oh my God. And then I had to get rushed. to. So I went to the family practice doctor. He has to do this emergency. Like, uh, he Cut basically makes an incision on the bottom of my foot and the top just to drain it. Yeah. And, and this is without any anesthetic, anything to kind of help with the pain, just to cut open and get it going. He forgot the crawling. He blocked it out. And then, <laughs> uh, yeah, I blocked it out. And then, and then I go immediately rush to the emergency room. And then, so I, I had to end up like having uh overnight surgery. And then I was there for 10 days of them just draining and sticking things in the holes. And damn 10 days you're in the hospital. Yeah. It was flesh wow. eating bacteria. Wow. Do you know, do you know, do you know what the odds are that he could have lost his foot? They're significant. That's what Courtney started bringing up. She's like, you are so lucky you didn't get your foot amputated. And I was totally like, lost like I, foot. I, I, like honestly, yesterday or it was two days ago, I was talking to this story, and it didn't even dawn on me that I had all that that like the the worst possible things that could happen. God, the amount of jokes I'd have for you if you were just a one leg adjusting. You know, how, <laughs> hey, you know how much more? Hey, you know how much more? I would have got a pig leg. You know how much more popular we'd be? Yeah, you yeah. know what's more? <laughs> if he had one leg, we'd be way more. I don't popular. know. That just barely counts out his white privilege yeah. a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it it's makes him even. Yeah, it's but not I'm enough. Just like, it's not enough. Maybe a wheelchair even. Maybe, did I come? Complain? I didn't fucking complain. You know, I don't. I just didn't even know any better. Like, I like it wasn't like conveyed to me that like I needed to like cry about that. Yeah, you know, you know they don't get it because just like when you hear stories from your dad when you were little, or I do, it's your dad telling the story. But isn't it the dad's job? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, no, your dads aren't stepping up and, and, and toughening up these kids, man. It's yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. So, so what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Take away their food and shit? I, I, was, I was angry about it, dude. Guys, I was like thinking, I'm like, man, drop throws, them off in the woods. Yeah, throws, you yeah, find, throws, them a bow, <laughs> throws them a bow and arrow. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> if you find your way Rub home, some dirt on it. We'll take care of you. <laughs> you so, know? anyway, yeah, I got a little fired up about it. And then I just calmed down because I was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, everybody's got easier right now and blah, 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 blah. You know, we can make excuses. But it just was like, I just remember playing sports and then like, I was always injured playing sports. Like you just keep going. You just do. You just keep doing it. Like you can't, yeah. I'm like trying, I was trying to like, okay, that's a ridiculous story. Now let's kind of bring it back to like, you know, oh, my little ankle hurts, you know? And like, how well, do I relate? You don't even have to go that far. Just look at when your kids, you ever see your kids, kids are bored when they don't have anything to do. They free. Oh, what, I don't have anything to do. It was like, I had three channels on TV when I was a kid yeah. and, and, and it was only kids TV and 9 a.m. on Saturday. 
Yeah. So I always had to figure out what to do. You See, guys now I like, wonder me what I can so do. So do you think that has something to do though too that we this this our kid generation dude have with the the amount of television and the amount of like uh, gaming consoles and the amount of t iPad phone stuff? Do you think that played a role? Because I, I I'm watching and the reason why I'm asking this is because I'm I'm wondering if like if I'm gonna be able to shift that a little bit different for my son because of us not allowing a lot of that. Like, and I see him, he's really, I mean, he's got an imagination that's crazy to me. Like he just makes up plays and does characters. Yeah, and but, yeah, but listen, listen, like, there's so, nothing we can do, bro, because like, you don't, you I, don't like, think that we, I don't, you know what? You we, don't think that that part of that is thing, our fault for the way we shaped him early we on? We do, but what I read was uh, the best data that I've, I've seen shows that what you can do with your kid is to make them feel responsible uh, for for uh, doing better in the world. That's the the biggest impact. So like you have your kid volunteer or you tell the kid, look, we're really successful. We do really well. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility to do the right thing and to help I other people. Like well, yeah, sure. I don't, I don't deny that. But, but that, I mean, like the you're, challenges part. You're talking a, about, you're talking about some, I'm, that, you're talking about two different things. I, I'm commenting on your like point being, of being the bored. kids being bored. Oh, yeah. you just let them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best thing to do is, because I'll don't, do this. I mean, that's what, so my point. Jessica why helps not, me with that where I'll turn everything off and then yeah. they'll she's complain. Sit in it. And yeah. she looks at yeah. me and she'll be like, just let them figure it out. And sure I think we train, we train them to give them that, that crutch for so long. That's my point. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think that, that is, and I, and I like to think that the if you're if you're you've got a kid under the age of say five right now we're more aware so hopefully you're we're setting better better trends now unfortunately when you guys had your kids it was all so new so you yeah. kind of didn't know like in your defense right a lot of parents just oh cool new tech new thing yeah. weren't really thinking I was like in my oh. 20s too and just you're just you know right you're not thinking yeah, about you you're probably not thinking about that stuff like i mean many parents probably I, are i told you guys how when i was a kid my mom and dad got an argument because my dad said the kids have too many toys and i'm gonna throw some away and my mom's like no they're gonna miss them my dad literally got two garbage bags filled them up with toys, took them out. And the bet was, I bet they don't even notice. Yeah. And we didn't. No. We had no idea yeah. that he threw away half of our toys. Yeah. You know? And he likes to tell us what he played. He had one toy. I told you guys about this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a wheel. Yeah. It was a, it was a bicycle rib <laughs> that he found. A, a stick in a wheel? <laughs> Why was that a thing? <laughs> Why was that a thing? I don't a, know. That one was a kid thing. figured it out. Doug, just you were like, doing that stuff back yeah. then, right? I think it's a challenge. It's fun. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. He's doing something. You know going. what this guy was doing this weekend that I think I'm so jealous of him that he What'd has. You, do? It's, you know, it's crazy considering that he, he was born us. in the forties that he has, <laughs> he actually has video of like, born in the 40s. He's, he's has video of his childhood. <laughs> Even has video of his parents' wedding. Oh, did wedding. you switch them over to, to digital? Is that what you've been Yeah, doing? so I had some old films and I took them to Costco. And this was like two years ago. And I had these DVDs sitting around. I, this weekend, I found them. And I go, oh, I should check these out. Found old movies of me when I was like uh, three years old. Oh, I bet. Were you chubby, little, cute, little baby? I was a chubby, yeah. cute child. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I could see it. Adorable, I love but isn't that. that cool that I mean yeah, he had great, chubby baby. and I tease him that like, he wasn't born in the forties. But I mean he, I, I don't have any video. I'm sure you guys don't have a lot of video. Oh, of you. my parents have a lot of videos. Uh, oh, you yeah, have a lot of video of you when you're younger. Yeah, yeah, but but they're all on VHS. And my dad every once in a while will play. She really has a stigma because or what do you call it? stigmatism, or whatever. Oh, because of the because the camera, like on was with that one eye that she was like doing the, the no. My dad, JVC. my dad had the you know he'd have like the thing yeah the big one around big old BS yeah. I mean, you look. He looked like he was making a movie. You know what I mean? That's how big they were. And he used to he used to take a lot of videos of us and stuff. Oh, so you guys do? Yeah. You guys, I love that stuff. Yeah. Uh, you guys ever sit down and have you just have you sat have Jessica to down and watched it? Yeah. I, we haven't in a long time. I used to get mad when you put them on because you're embarrassed when you get older to watch yourself as a yeah. kid. Now I don't give a shit. But I, yeah. I remember at one point I used to hate it. He put them on. Like, oh fuck! I'm gonna do that thing on the kid. Oh, oh, I have way too thing. many embarrassing ones. Like, and my mom will resurrect them every now and then. And so you got them too, then, huh? Yeah, and so it's so jealous. It, yeah, it's just. Uh, I thought yeah. I, I thought more of you guys it's, were like it's me. overrated. <laughs> it's overrated, bro. You guys, you guys, it was, I was like, I was always goofing, and it was like it's it's cringe, yeah. like five thousand. You know, yeah, like, Jessica's, it, Jessica's like you. She has whole periods where like they lost half of their pictures and stuff because they moved and shit yeah, happened, yeah. so she didn't have yeah yeah a whole lot. Yeah, there's not a lot of. Uh, I mean, I can think of like one little album my mom has of like some ch some pictures I have. Most all pictures and video that I have of myself is when I started. And I probably when I was, I want to say junior high ish, I, like I got that was when cam like cameras yeah. were a thing. Now, now these days, because it's so accessible, <laughs> it's the opposite. I have Jessica's constantly reminding me to not film. Yeah. Because I'll be at the park with the kids and she's like, stop 
filming everything because they know they're being filmed and it changes. It takes them out of being present. And she's right. It's true. Yeah. If I put it on and he notices, or the kids notice, it does change. You know, oh, yeah. It does they, change I things. mean, yeah. Then they pick it's just so hard not to because, you, you know, like we're at the oh, park yeah. and my, my kid's like climbing things he hasn't climbed before because mm. he's cautious like his dad. I was a very cautious kid. But he's taking these risks and he's so proud of himself. So I'm like filming him, you know? I'm like, oh, you know? Yeah. She's like, don't film him. Like, I already did. I mean, <laughs> Sorry. I mean, yes I and stopped. no, right? I, I think tried. there's a balance there, right? Because there's a part, I mean, one of my, I'm so glad that I have documented a lot of Max's growing up because one of my favorite things, he's only, you know, only four years old. Yeah. I still love. Do you I do like, it? Yeah. Does it, does it make you, does it ever make you super emotional? Oh yeah. yeah. Already. You know what I'm saying? He's only four and I already get that way when I start when I look back at all this stuff. But I'm so glad I have that. Like it's literally a timeline of him growing up and mm -hmm. I have all these all these clips and stuff like that. I, I wish my partner would divide the time so I get to be somewhat present in some of these moments and then she videoed everything. But Katrina, I mean, of all you're that woman's strengths. And you're the like, organizer yeah. of the videos. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which I just adopted. I actually didn't want to be that guy, but I wanted it so bad that I knew if I want if I want this done, bro, she doesn't care. That, that happens. Much. I have somehow adopted the I uh, pack our luggage and I unpack our luggage, and that's what I do. I don't want to do that, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happened. I don't know how it worked, how it happened, but this is it what I do. Happens, now. yeah. That's just yeah. it. So she'll get everything together. It's all on the floor. I'm the packer. I was talking to Vicky luggage. today. We're talking about that. I was talking about relationships yeah. and the, you know how that. Like one of the one of the best things that happened for our relationship was, of course, having Max. But for other for not obvious reasons, we've always had like, like I'm a little bit OCD with like the the house and things in order and also like that. And just a little bit. <laughs> I'm like Jessica, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And Katrina's more like you, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I wouldn't categorize you or Katrina as slobby, messy people. Yeah. You just don't care. You just She doesn't care about it or I'll get to it type of deal. Yeah. And I'm more like Jessica where everything has to have its place. But what I have found for us that is just, I figured it out and I was just like, I don't know, I was telling Douglas this morning, we were talking about, we were actually talking about this exact conversation is that I started to go like, listen, at the end of the day, she's right. It's not the end of the world. If this thing is not in its place and our, our life can be normal, but it bothers me so much that I, and if it bothers me that much and I want it that bad, why don't I take initiative and do it? I just figured out there's a time that she really handles something that I don't ever have to worry about. I don't ever have to, unless she's not around for that day or whatever, make my son's meals. Like I don't, I don't make she his, does that. she makes all his meals. She bathes him, gets him ready for bed. Mm -hmm. That's like an hour and a half process at night. When you add in cooking the dinner, feeding him, cleaning up after him, getting him ready for the bath, getting him in the bath, reading to all that. So that's like that reframing skill is so important, dude. Mm -hmm. And so I just looked at it as like, okay, I need to, that's my time now to do those things that I care so much about. And she's, and what was beautiful about it was it just kind of naturally happened for us. And then of course there's times where Katrina goes, Oh man, I'm, I had a long day today, Ruff. Could you take care of Max? Could you feed him? Could you put him down? Yeah, yeah, sure. Just, you know, make sure you take care of what I do when I do that. <laughs> and and she's like, and it's not like she doesn't step up and do it. You know, yeah. she's like, okay. And then she's realized how much she doesn't like doing that. So like she never, she'll be tired and doesn't want to do all those things. She'd for, rather do that. But she'd rather do yeah. that than actually muster up the energy to do the dishes. And the clean reframing the is so important. You know, like I I, I feed our, our 10 month old at night uh, more often now because Jessica was so sleep provided for so long, it was affecting her health and everything else. And so I was doing it and, uh, I, you know, I love it now. Like at first I was like, I got to do this. And then, it, but I was like, I, I was like the other night I was holding my, my daughter and I'm feeding her, you know, and it's like, you know, 3 AM, 4 AM. And she takes her little hands, her little chubby baby hands. And she rubs my arm hair oh, that's great. with both hands like this while she's drinking. And I'm like, oh man, you know, I'd be missing out on that if I wasn't, if yeah. I wasn't doing it. It's totally worth it. I know. I agree with you. Like it's, it's funny how it was such a big deal in our relationship, solved the, the problem. And then it's even switched to where I enjoy it. Yeah. It's now become this very that's the key, meditative dude. type of process. I mean, I, don't you believe that we can do that with all things in our life? Of course. I really believe of that. Course. Uh, yeah. that if, and you know what helps with that? Gratitude. Mm -hmm. yeah. Period. End of story. Like what, when you feel like complaining, like, okay, what am I grateful for from that person? Oh yeah, they do that thing or they do uh -huh. these things that are great that I suck at. Did you see that clip I sent you about that? No. About, yes, you did. I the did. clip where the, the, in the, in the Bible it talks about oh, switching yeah. your mind from, um, uh, anxiety, is it anxious? Anxiety to and gratitude occupy the same part of the brain. Right. You mm -hmm. can't, 
So the next time, so the next both. time, I thought that was such a un, unbelievable that that was something. So that, if you, if you, we know the research today. Yeah, that was something that is that goes all the way back right. to the Bible. In other words, if you feel anxious and you focus on feeling gratitude, that part of the brain can't do both. Yep. And so then you'll start to feel such a powerful strategy. So, the next time you're feeling anxious yep. like that. And you're then switch it around and go like, let me think of the things that I'm really grateful for in my life and see how much that like, uh, like suppresses the anxiety along with that. I, I think know, that's cool. such a, a powerful habit. Hey, I mm. wanted to bring this up because uh, we talk so much about creatine and its value and it is the ultimate longevity supplement and the data now is super supportive of, of the statement. People still want to know, what, are there things I can take with creatine to enhance absorption, make it more effective? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Now, creatine monohydrate plain, perfectly fine. Studies done on it are typically done with pure creatine, no problem. However, you can definitely enhance absorption or its uh, effectiveness if you take it with certain compounds. Now, it's not a game changer, uh, but for some people it might be. There's some people that don't respond to creatine quite as well as others. In those cases, I would say it'd be a good idea. Do you think the people that are not responding to them that a big correlation of that has to do with their inability to absorb it? I think so. Mm. Oh, I think, interesting. I, I think it might have to do with something like that because typically they'll have, sometimes they'll have gastro issues. On right. Top of yeah. It. Get a little sick to the stomach. Some people, right. So you know who I've heard talk about that? Who is um, the guy from UK we had on here? He's been in the bodybuilding world forever. Tattooed. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Gethin. Gethin? Yes. Yeah, he, yeah. His creatine has a different, has something paired with it for that. Exa I heard him talk about that. Yeah. But that's like his big thing on his creatine. Yeah. So, so you like. assimilate it better? Yes. Yeah. So the, 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 the hammer or should I say, yeah, the hammer on this would be like, just have it with sugar spikes. Insulin could drive more creatine into your system. Obviously not ideal, not a great idea. That was the original. Those were like the first ways that people tried to improve the efficacy of creatine. So that's one way to do it. I don't necessarily recommend that unless you're bulking and need extra calories. Don't mind feeling gross afterwards. The second one would be sodium. Sodium could help. Uh, carnitine, L-carnitine, in particular L-carnitine uh, tartrate. Um, uh, Recharge from Legion has L-carnitine tartrate and then something else called corosolic acid, I believe, which increases insulin sensitivity. So it's similar. It would be like, it would be like making your current insulin levels more powerful. And what insulin does is it drives nutrients into muscle cells. So, so I, recharge is an example of a creatine supplement that has a couple things with Legion that, yeah, with Legion that helps. So, uh, okay. So I'm assuming, cause I know Mike so well that, cause, and Mike would be this, I think agree with us that, you know, cause we always talk about creatine monohydrate is like, that's the, it. it's all you need. Yep. So, so I'm assuming he's done that to cover all the base. Yep. Is that what it is? It's yep. just like, okay, for the small population of people that may have issues with uptaking the maximum amount, there is a people and with like the Chris Gethins and people yep. like that. Yep. There is going to be a, a, a people that are going to benefit from that. So may as well pair it with that. And now I've yeah. covered all the bases. Yeah. Cause carnitine is uh, good for mitochondrial health, ATP production, which is what the creatine does. And then corosolic acid increases insulin sensitivity. So you're, in, theoretically, insulin would drive more nutrients into the cells, making the creatine uh, more effective. So oh. just, those are a few examples. I, I always get messages like, okay, I know you say creatine monohydrate. I know you say just about powder. <coughs> mm -hmm. However, I'd like to add something to it. What are the things I could do? Those are the things that so far the data shows uh, might have a little bit of an effect. So I, I know that we talked about, do you know the name of the video that you shared? I think that's a great no, shout out. No, her name is, let me find it. Today. Her name is Dr. Becky. And I think you've talked about her before, so we've actually talked yeah, about her. Yeah, Good Inside is uh, is the course that I was taking. But the YouTube her. video that you sent, I, I I sent that to more. I can't remember the last time I sent a, yeah. a clip to as many people as I sent that to. I sent it to all my best friends. I sent it to my family. Like a lot of people got that that clip from me because I thought it was such yeah, a good. I'm clip. trying to find it right it's now. It's a short video too. It's only like, oh, like, here we go, here we go. It's Becky Kennedy, the single most important parenting strategy. That's what it's called. The most important parenting strategy. Highly recommend the video. It's not just for parenting. It's just for relationships, period. End of story. It's really yeah. good. Yes. Organifi makes organic supplements to support your health and wellness. They have superfood blends that make it easy and enjoyable to add variety and nutrition to your day. So they have a great phenomenal for recovery, a gold juice. It's great for rest and sleep and a red juice for energy. Plus much more. Go check them out. Go to Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com, forward slash mind pump, use the code mind pump and get 20% off. All right, back to the show.
Our first caller is Izzy from Florida. Izzy, how can we help you? Hey. How are you? Um, thanks for having me on the show. Um, so I'm just going to read it verbatim to make things easy. Um, in January, I started a 20-week prep for a bikini competition. And long story short, my body gave out to me four weeks prior to the show, and I was never able to walk the stage. My coach started me off at 1,200 calories for 10 weeks, and nine weeks out from the show, he dropped me to 800 calories a day with an hour of cardio a day as well. Um, I sh I've struggled immensely with weight gain post-prep, and I'm having a really hard time getting my body back to normal. So I guess my question is, do you have any recommendations for this or any tips on how to get my metabolism back to normal? Because basically, I feel like I don't have one anymore. Did you, yeah. did you, wow. just, now, did you just now find Mind Pump? Um, no. Well, I found it right after the competition. Well, I heard, <laughs> so I heard a talk or an interview that Sal did halfway through and you were kind of saying that low calories was never the solution and kind of flagged the situation for me because I didn't know anything going into it. And, um, but I was really stubborn and determined to walk the stage. So I was like, ah, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so Okay, I want to back. I, just, I want to yeah. back up here for a second because this will help us as we move forward. Okay, what made you continue with that process when you were going from twelve hundred calories, which is already insanely low, down to eight hundred calories, and keep going until your body basically forced you to stop? What was it that kept you there? Um. So my coach was my uncle, and I think in my head I was like he wouldn't do anything that would harm me, and I also. Like, I'm, again, I'm stubborn. So I was like, I can just fight through it. It's fine. And then it was a fact of like, maybe this is normal. And I just didn't know. Yeah. So that's a tough position to be in. The reason why I asked you that, uh, Izzy, it, by, by the way, he put you on like what a POW would do. Literally 800 calories a day, working you like crazy. Um, it's, I mean, you, you, you survived and that's the right word to use as you survive. That was, that's insane. That nutrient deficient hormones probably went terrible. Yeah. Your, metabol your body, your metabolism didn't survive. Yeah. So, so, okay. So the reason why I asked you that is because I want you to use that same dogged determination to do what we're about to tell you to do, because it's going to require as much, if not more discipline than what you did before, because a lot of, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to tell you, don't do that. Uh oh, you're eating too much, or I need to work out more, or, oh no, this, uh, maybe I'm going to gain too much weight type of deal. Okay. You got to ignore those voices and you can listen to the health signals of your body, but you're going to have to really, really be disciplined at least in the beginning. Cause it's going to feel kind of weird to do what we're about to say. So I know in your, in your question, it says that you work out with weights five days a week that you do 30 minutes of cardio three to four days a week. Right now, your calories are about 1,800, which is good. You're gaining weight, which is probably what you need to do uh, at this point. Your body probably needs to gain a little bit of weight. I'm going to take your strength training down from five days a week to three days a week, and I'm going to take your cardio away, and I want you to just make sure you get 10,000 steps a day, mm -hmm. and that's it. Okay. And keep your calories probably where they're at. Where right? are they right now? 1,800, she said. They're at 1,800 right now? Give or take, I'm probably hitting closer to 16 right now because of my schedule. Okay. I, I just don't know what to eat or like how to approach the diet part. Oh, okay. So that's kind of my struggle. Here's your here's here's the, the the two things I'll have you focus on, and that's it. Okay, don't eat processed foods. So make sure everything you eat is whole and natural, and hit your pro hit your body weight and protein. What's your body weight at right now? 128. Okay, so aim for about 125 to 130 grams of protein a day. So protein. Hit that first. So 130 divided by three or four meals. That's what you have each meal. Eat it first in the meal. Shoot for whole foods, not shakes and bars. And all only, day. Yeah, no, no, nothing processed, including bars and shakes. Only use shakes at the end of the day if you totally missed your protein. Okay. If you miss it by 20 grams, not a big deal. If you're, you know, if you're, you know, below 100 grams, then go ahead and throw a shake in there. But hit your protein, avoid heavily processed foods. I'm going to say, if you don't have MAPS Anabolic, that's the program I want you to do. Do you have any of our programs? I have split. Wrong one. I want you to do MAPS Anabolic. Follow MAPS Anabolic. Do no cardio except hit 10,000 steps a day. Do what we said. And slowly, you will regain your health. Slowly, things will start to come back. You're young. Uh, you'll, you'll be totally fine. It's going to take some time, but it's going to feel very counterintuitive because you're so used to beating yourself up that you're going to feel like, oh, I got to be doing more. That's the, the, the idea is to not push your body. The idea is allow your body to heal 
and to build some muscle. The only thing I want to add is I want to put you in our private forum just because I know how challenging this can be to reverse out of this mentally. Um, and we have several uh, clients that are in there that either one, I've helped through a bikini competition or two, uh, have dealt with something similar to this. So you have a good community of people uh, that are familiar with this. And then of course you have the three of us that are floating around in there. So uh, I'm going to get you in the forum. And then what Sal's ad advice to you is perfect. I right? just stay focused on that. The hardest part is going to be the mental discipline of sticking to it, trusting the process. A little bit of get weight gain is not a big deal. So hopefully we're building muscle. So there should be a little bit of weight gain on the scale. I don't want to see rapid weight gain, five, 10 pounds a week adding like that would be a big deal. Then we would probably have to come back a little bit on the calories for now to before we could increase, maybe we increase too much at first, but that should be the goal. Slowly yeah. increase those calories, get stronger, stay the course. Focus on getting strong. How tall are you? Five two. Yeah. Your body weight's fine. I just I focus on getting stronger, doing the things we said go through MAPS Anabolic. At the end of MAPS Anabolic, you can do it again. Or if you want to do another program, I would go MAPS Powerlift because strength is going to be really good to focus on right now because it's going to mess with your head because of where you came from. So bumping calories, not doing all the cardio, not lifting every single you know day or five days a week, it's going to mess with your head a little bit. So if you focus on strength and you start to see the numbers go up on the bar, it's going to feel very motivating and positive to you. And that's really where you should be focused. I mean, if you were my client, that's all we would focus on is strength. I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at anything else. I would just look at how strong can I get you in, in the major lifts. You, you look like you have youth on your side too. So this is, you're, you're going to bounce back. Yeah, you'll so be fine. I've worked with a lot of people like, is, uh, uh, was your uncle a bodybuilder? Did he compete before? Is that why you hired him? Yeah. 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 He had never trained a female before, um, to be transparent. And he didn't know, I don't think he was counting my calories. He was just giving me a meal plan, yeah. like what specifically to eat. So it wasn't until I tracked them that I realized kind of what was happening. So, I mean, I, look, so. I, I'm not going to, I'll tell you the worst people, some of the worst people to hire to give you diet and workout advice is a bodybuilder. I hate to say it. Yeah, the irony of that, that they're the ones giving out the most Yeah, diet I mean, advice. Your, your uncle, I don't know how successful he was at bodybuilding, but- It doesn't matter. Oftentimes, the people who succeed at a local level or regional level in bodybuilding, it's in spite of how shitty their, their programming is and their diet. It's like their body can withstand the most abuse and they can keep the most amount of muscle with the lowest amount of calories, and they're the ones that tend to win. They're not- they tend to not be the ones that have the best strategy. And then what they do is they take that strategy that they did to themselves, which is probably what he did. And then it's like, oh, I'm going to apply it to you. You're smaller than me. So you're going to eat this much less. And then, oh, it's not working. Let's add more. Let's cut more. Oh, it's not working. Let's add more. Let's cut more. Um, and that's just super common. I mean, in his defense, I don't think this is just bodybuilder guys like him. I think this is everybody. I think everybody thinks because they got themselves in shape that they can help somebody else get mm -hmm. in shape. And it's absolutely not the case at all. Training other people and understanding the, the metabolism, understanding physiology, understanding nutrition, program. Like there's that's just a whole a, different skill. That's set. a whole different skill mm -hmm. set. And then knowing all that stuff is already takes a lot of education and practice. And then going and applying it on all different body types, different ages, different challenges that, I mean, it's just people think that because somebody else can get shredded, regardless of whether they did shows or not, is a, a good person to help us with it's like no yeah. they're not at all and this is a very common mistake that we make especially I, now that instagram is so popular i wouldn't tell him anything you're doing now because he may confuse you further or whatever i wouldn't even let him know and if he asked just say i'm oh i'm powerlifting now i'm just trying to get as strong as possible and just you know leave it at that did, did yeah, you yeah he didn't he didn't even want me to reverse diet or anything he just told me to go back to normal life and i gained 20 pounds immediately after yeah. so that's of course. <laughs> did you did you lose your period during that period of time and all that stuff? And and, and is, are your hormones back to normal? Do they feel like they're balancing out? I got my first period back today, and I stopped in May. Yeah. So that's a good sign. Or this week. So it was been a minute. My good. hormones are still a little off, but um, I guess my concern is: Do you think that being lean again is still possible? Or yeah, do you think absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't even We're do it the right way next. Yeah, time. you got to do it the right way next time, and don't even try it until you're in a no. really Get good, healthy, first, yeah. healthy, strong, fast metabolism. You know, I don't have to do tons of cardio to whatever to maintain myself. Izzy, there's a, there's a lot of episodes where we've talked about this. Just so you know, so I don't know if you've kind of gone through the old catalog. We've talked about this a lot. Um, when I used to help bikini competitors, I wouldn't even let you hire me like for a prep 
I wanted you in the off season because and and you need to know this whether you hire another coach or you just do this in yourself in the future sometime. When when you go into prep, where your metabolism is, metabolism is before prep is so important to whether you're going to have success in prep. If you go into a prep and you are already at a you know you got to lose ten to twelve percent body fat already, you're also only eating you know eighteen hundred to two thousand calories. Yeah, that's a you don't you can't go into prep like you. I would not allow a girl. I don't care how much she offered me money wise. I would say no. You're just your your metabolism isn't in a healthy place for us to do an extreme diet and compete. Consider like, this: your 800 calories a day that you were eating, or even your 1,200 calories, was just enough to sustain life. Like it wasn't enough to recover. It wasn't enough to produce hormones, catecholamines. It wasn't enough to support skin or hair. You probably noticed some hair loss. You probably noticed your fingernails started to look weird. Your skin probably started to change. Literally, your body didn't have enough to perform certain functions. And it was just relegated to the most basic functions, which were stay alive. So, and then you're training on top of that. Just exacerbates well, that's all, all that. that. Yeah. I mean, that's a, literally you put yourself in a situation like POWs where they're fed, you know, 800 calories a day and made forced to work hard labor. So uh, get, make sure you, is he getting the forum? Make sure you get in the forum and, and introduce yourself. There's a lot of people that have, have been here before and a lot of girls that compete just that get are, strong. I'm gonna tell you right now, you add a combined 50 pounds or 60 pounds of weight to your, your total of your squat, deadlift and bench. You're going to look better than you ever have. I'm gonna tell you that right now. You're going you're gonna to be very pleased with how you look, but for now, just focus on getting stronger. That'll get you, that'll get you where you want to go. Awesome. Thank you. You got it. All right. Izzy. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, thanks for having me. She when she said it was her uncle, I like held back. If she, oh, she if it wasn't her uncle, I was gonna rail. Yeah. You know, yeah. because that's just that's a tough position to but be. But I mean, I mean, he, I mean, he obviously, I mean, he obviously, if he cares about his niece, right? He cares. Yeah. He doesn't know any better. He's just like, oh, this is what you do. This is what I did. But you know? this is yeah. listen, ladies. If your coach is starting you at twelve hundred calories at the beginning of your prep, fire them immediately. Yeah. That is unhealthy. You're gonna end up in a place where. It's going to take you a year or two to come out of. I've seen, I've seen damage so bad. I had a client took three years, took us three years to get things to come back to normal. And that was with dedicated work. So, um, if you can't yeah. imagine yourself eating a thousand to 1200 calories less than your current maintenance place, if that doesn't, if that number isn't a healthy place to be, you have no business competing. That's right. So you should be able to go like, Oh, I, I eat, 2,800 calories. Okay, I could take 1,000 calories off of that to 1,200 calories and still be in a, a, a healthy place. like that. Because you got to keep in mind that over the course of a, a, a prep, you're going to be dropping You're going to be dropping and increasing activity. That's and right. so you need to have runway. And if you come in the show already and you're un, or prep and you're already cutting below 2,000 calories, get out now. You're not in a healthy place unless you're already – you know, one Shredded. two percent away from your your goal weight, which that's a different scenario. But if you have any significant body fat to lose, 10, 15, 20 pounds of fat, what are you doing? It has to be stage presentation sports, uh, have to be, especially for women, the least probably the most unhealthy thing that they can compete in. Period. And one of the most popular running a are. marathon is healthier. And I don't even think people <laughs> should go run a marathon who don't know how to run or doing a triathlon yeah. who don't exercise. I think it's healthier for a couch potato to train for a marathon than it is for a girl who works out five days a week and whatever to go enter into a competition where she's going to present her, herself on stage. It's one of the least healthy things you could do. Yeah. Izzy, when you listen to this, uh, I'm going to shout out uh, Rochelle Adair and then also uh, Grace Barga, who are two bikini competitors, all natural, have gone and competed, won their shows, done incredible. Uh, and have done that in a healthy manner. So those are great resources inside of our forum. Two ladies that have done a great job. Our next caller is Tim from Florida. Tim, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on, guys? As always, uh, wow, this is a lot more intimidating than I thought it would be. As everybody always <laughs> I won't put that uh, on you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, really, real quick, I definitely got to give a, a, a shout out to Doug uh, um, because you know, he's, he's ruined a lot of other podcasts for me because of the quality uh, that he's put you guys in, in this studio. Uh, and, uh, to one of my former coaches, Katie Butler, a couple of you guys might know her, uh, she's my former OTF coach, but she turned me on to you guys, uh, about a year ago. I actually, 
listened to started listening to one of the episodes i was looking for a health and fitness podcast and started listening i was like man what's going on here i don't really know what this format is i was expecting you know advice and all this stuff and uh so i kind of like i stepped away from it and she's like no 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 she's like give it a chance like check it out listen and uh I've been, I probably haven't missed an episode in about a year now. So I awesome. uh, really appreciate it. So um, I'll dive into some background. So uh, in about 2012, 2013, I actually worked at uh, a big box gym for a little while. I was selling gym memberships and uh, yeah, it, it worked out okay. But I had a friend of mine who was a personal trainer, brought me into the world, never really got into into it right never really could find my passion for it I always felt like oh this is work this is what's going on so i left that in about 2015 i got into to tech sales and then i into actually it support and kind of got a little heavy and uh, right before i moved to florida in 2016 i got up to about 240 pounds and uh was having to go to the bathroom a lot and was like man why is my why is vision blurry and everything well went to the doctor and they they checked my blood sugar and i was off the charts right so they sent me to hospital they pumped me full of ivs and then they put me on metformin for a while uh i lost about uh 30 pounds just by changing diet and just kind of walking and everything still never really found my fitness lifestyle but as as everybody else always a lot of times does i yo-yo dieted right I tried low carb, I tried all this, tried that, and I, and I gained some of it back. And um, I, I kind of got defeated, I got lazy, and um, finally got to a point where I was starting to try again. And I was just walking, I was just been really crash dieting again. And my girlfriend decided to try to get me to try OTF. And I was like, sure, I'll give it a try. I went in there first day and it kicked my butt, right? I barely could even run on the treadmill and uh, fell in love, signed up, did like two days a week first when I first started the membership. And then I probably got three classes in and I went unlimited. Well, I think that turned into uh, really just overdoing it for myself because I really loved workouts. I loved being able to, to not have to go into a big box gym and be intimidated and go through and understand like, oh, I got to wait on equipment. I don't know what I'm really doing. I kind of have a background. I kind of, I think I can deadlift. I think I can do this stuff, but you know, the equipment's always there and they had benchmarks, right? It was easy for me to, to go. But really what that turned into is just really me finding out that I really just enjoyed kicking my ass, right? Um, so transform transformation challenge came one year and uh, I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. And I did it. But I, I, you know, as you guys always said, I did it in the wrong way, right? All I did was crash diet. And by the time I was done with the transformation challenge, I had lost probably a good 15 to 20 pounds, but I did the in-body scan and I basically either barely gained any muscle or lost it all. And I really came to the realization then that it was like, this didn't work, man. I didn't get, I didn't feel like I got stronger. I was weak. I was whatever. So I was like, I, I really struggled with trying to figure out, like, could I build the body that I wanted to build at OTF, right? Um, without just always being in the cardio rut. So really what I'm trying to figure out, and, you know, since I've sent in my question, I've kind of made some some changes based on the subsequent episodes that I listened to right after I sent in my question. They all seem to speak to me, right? So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so we'll kind of go, we'll start there. And really my main question is, you know, how do I take the skills that I've learned from, you know, having a few very good coaches at OTF and transition that into weights, right? Like I'm moving into trying to move into anabolic, but I'm trying to move into to barbell moves, but I've always been doing dumbbell moves and body weight exercises with the TRX and stuff like that. So I'm trying to figure out how I, how I take those skills and how I transfer, okay, what weight should I start at? Yeah, so uh, the, the 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 transfer or the change is pretty straightforward. Um, uh, stop doing OTF; it's not working. For, it's not good for you. Go to traditional strength training and just start slow. Just start slow with the weights. Work by feel. You want to pick a weight that helps you that allows you to perform good technique and good form, but with a decent amount of intensity within the prescribed rep range. Maps Anabolic has a pre phase. I would start in pre phase, and I would do that for about a month. 
and then I would move into phase one and so on. But it's pretty straightforward. I would drop OTF completely and go 100% MAPS anabolic and then just track your steps uh, on a daily basis. Make sure you're getting, you know, a decent amount of walking uh, throughout the day. And that's pretty much it. Very straightforward. The, the challenge is going to be the switch, the mental switch. That's going to be the challenge. The goal should be to get stronger, but not sacrifice form and technique, right? So you don't want to, and we, you hear us talk a lot about the importance of building strength, building metabolism up, and that's a, a good focus. But I, I sense like this kind of like, you know, concern of like, ah, uh, I'm not, a, I'm not, I haven't been deadlifting for a long time or squatting. I'm I, maybe I don't have the best form or technique or whatever. Form and technique is everything, right? So don't be afraid that you're choosing too light of a weight uh, to get your form and technique that you're like in risk of not seeing results. You're going to see results, especially I know the format at Orange Theory. There's nothing in there that compares to a deadlift and a barbell squat. So you, deadlifting and bar and barbell back squatting 135 pounds which I'm, I'm pretty confident a guy like you could probably do uh with good form and technique even that amount of weight is significantly different than anything you did at orange theory mm -hmm. orange theory is a, a rack of dumbbells that stop at like what 30 or oh no they have the bigger dumbbells that you can use for some of the exercises but you're not doing any big leg movements with anything more than at best 100 pounds right there everything is under that pretty much and body weight stuff and suspension trainer you're going to see great benefit from just barbell back squatting and deadlifting and doing it real light. Go light. Go light and get the technique down until you feel really comfortable and confident and then slowly start to build on that and trusting the process. Eating, hit your protein intake. That should be a major focus of you over all things nutritionally is eat whole foods, hit my protein intake every day consistently, not every once in a while or only when you work out. Every single day, hit that. And uh, be mindful of the, the calories you consume. But I think just doing that, you're going to see a huge change. Yeah, I I honestly don't think there's anything wrong, too, with just focusing on those big core lifts. To his point, in terms of like the mechanics of it, learning, it's a completely new skill. If it's something that you haven't been doing or have never done, um, it's going to require a lot of attention in terms of like uh, understanding your body in, in every incremental inch of that lift so you know if you're bracing the entire time if you're getting enough depth if you feel like you know you're in any kind of like discrepancy with your joints and uh, there's a lot for you to kind of work your way through mechanically it would, it would help a lot to maybe even have a coach or somebody a friend or videotape even you doing these lifts uh, and then post them in our forum so we can kind of help guide or some some other people can kind of give you some cues and feedback um, but really like being proficient in those lifts is going to take you so much further uh, it, you know, in, in the rest of your pursuits. And I, I love and MAPS Anabolic. It does a great job of building muscle and strength. It might be a little bit much in terms of like, you know, learning that new skill, adding a lot of volume on top of that and kind of like moving in that direction. Th that might be a good bridge is like, you know, those five core like uh, multi-joint movements, just really hyper-focus on those. Yeah, I think I think start in pre-phase, do that for four weeks first. Look, the uh, if I had to label or pick one thing that defines strength training, it wouldn't be weights. It would be rest period. So I want you, because this is going to be hard for you because you're used to OTF style training. OTF is cardio. All of it's cardio. They just throw weights at you and, and suspension trainers and other stuff, but it's all cardio. This is going to feel very different. The rest periods are what make this strength training. So you do your set, good form, decent intensity. Don't go to failure, but decent intensity. And then you rest. You rest for two minutes. You're literally sitting there uh, waiting in between sets. That's uh, what's going to make it strength training. I'm so glad you said that. And a great way to help you stay in that mindset, and, I, and the, the app name is slipping me. Maybe Justin will remember by the time it, come, it gets to uh, finish my point, is I would be doing my deadlift and, then I, uh, and recording it with my phone. Like a bar path? Yeah, bar path. Thank you. And I would have the bar path app and I would I would video it and then I would sit down in my rest period and I'd be looking at my form, watching my technique and going, oh, it looks like my hips lifted a little much there. Oh, the bar came a little forward. And use that 
minute to three minutes minimum that you're resting between sets to really analyze your form and technique. Go set, prop the phone back up, go do another set again, go back, reassess it, see what you're doing. Like, like get, um, get excited about learning this craft and getting good at it. And who cares? Like to Justin's point, it maybe the whole workout ends up being just deadlifting that day. That's okay. That lift is so impactful for your, you're going to be your overall result and laying that foundation and getting good at that technique. I wouldn't even mind if that's what your workouts look like some days is where all you did was deadlift and shoulder press that day. That's all you did was barbell overhead yeah. press and deadlift that day, but you took your time and you focused on getting really good at it and working on it. Yeah. You're going to build that confidence and really Really, that's what it's all about. And once you get that confidence, then it's going to be a natural progression of like, well, I can keep adding weight. And then you can feel your way through that because, you know, the goal obviously to keep like progressively overloading is going to be a completely different mindset shift. And so that's what we're really kind of trying to hone in on. What's exciting about this is if you do take the time to, to who cares about how heavy the barbell is right now, get good at the technique and you start to go like, okay, this is say the you know, 10th time you've deadlifted at the, at the gym and you're like, oh, okay, this is starting to click for me. I can, I, and then you start stacking the weight on, watch how, watch how fast you get strong and watch how much the gains pile on when you get to that place, but don't rush to get there. Cause along the way, we're going to see results. You're going to get better, but really focus on just getting good at those core lifts that Justin's talking about and make that your main focus. Use anabolic as your, your base. Like this is a good for a program, but don't be afraid to just spend a whole workout focusing on one of the two of those main lifts. Yeah. Okay. Cause I think, uh, you know, cause part of, part of what, what I think I caught myself in, cause I, I did, I kind of said, Oh, you know, I've been doing orange theory. I kind of know my, my way around a little bit. Like maybe I don't need preface. Let me just jump right in. Right. No. So I did. Right. I jumped right in, um, you know, to, to week one. And, you know, the first day I wasn't really paying attention to myself and I ended up doing pretty much exercises from both categories. And I wrecked myself. Right. I was sore for, for two days after. And it was like, you know, OK, so, you know, I waited and I went back and then, you know, I focused, you know, you know several days after and I just focused on on day two. And, you know, the, this it felt really good for me. I felt like I had good form. Um, you know, I didn't get pain in anywhere that I shouldn't get pain. Um, but you know, of course it's always nice to have, you know, somebody, somebody look, but yeah, I think I've got a little bit of ego, right? Like how do I settle the ego yeah. to, you know, do I really need to go all the way back and really, really tell myself to slow down and go through pre-phase or should I just be slowing down? Because I, every day that I go in, I would say that I feel great. The lifts feel awesome. I feel like I can, I can deadlift. I feel like I can squat and, you know, I've done probably three workouts out of anabolic out of, you know, day one, day two foundation. And then it's just like, I just, I'm sore afterwards for too long. So it's like, I feel like I can put more weight and put more weight and put more weight. So it's like, do I lower the overall volume and kind of go for instead of six, you know, sets, do I do like three sets, but try to just stay in that rep range of one to four or do I lower weight and continue to focus on form? Either way is fine, but yeah. starting pre-phase anyway. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea of lowering the weight because you're going to benefit from the practice. So because we're wanting to get good at these squatting, deadlifting techniques, and you want to master that craft, reducing sets means less practice. So I would rather see you go lighter weight, but keep the practice up. And, and then again, get into the bar path app. I think it's a very valuable app to get into and just start to really geek out on your technique. I mean, still to this day, I'm like this. I always love to, when I'm home lifting, video my my lifts because I always want to see where's my technique yeah. at? Where can I tweak little things here and there? And get obsessed with that. Like get really focused on becoming a really great squatter and deadlifter, overhead presser. And, and instead of like, oh, I need to add more weight to the bar or I'm not sweating enough or I need to get more sore. Like that's kind of the mindset. That's the orange theory mindset of hammering the body, pushing, scoring more points like get out of that mindset be all about form technique take your time assess it with your videos get into it like that yeah it took me a long time i mean talking about that it took me a long time to break away from the calorie burn mentality right yeah. like it was like oh i can burn a thousand calories and i was like after i you know listening to this podcast and doing a lot of other reading it's like man calorie burn it just doesn't matter you know right. the, during the workout uh and i i kind of i came across that with you know with food and diet as well. You know, I got my fitness pal at this point, you know, I'm really just trying to focus on when I log, I just log protein, right? I think I'm probably floating around 
2,200 calories right now is probably what I'm floating at. And I'm, I kind of got up to about 205 since my, since my email. Um, but I, I've kind of, I think I've stayed about stable there and I have I don't really win the weekends. Right. So, uh, but I'm not gaining weight. Right. So it's, it's, it feels like it's okay that I've kind of stable there and I'm shooting around 179 for protein. And I try to increase, I try to hit that and go over top of it. Yeah. But that was the other thing that I did when I used to diet that I've really took a shift on is last time I lost all that weight. Dude, it was all Atkins bars and protein shakes and a little bit of chicken. So I've been trying to to not use any of that. And I think the one of the only things I really, you know, outside of you know eating out some a little bit here, really my biggest processed food right now, and I don't know if we consider it processed, would be creatures of habit, right? That's the major processed food that you know I consume every day, but it struggles for me because I can't eat eggs in the morning. So I usually have, I usually choose to do that since I usually eat. That's meat fine. I love, I love that. Bro. That's fine. Yeah, That's yeah. fine. You're on the right track. Just start pre-phase, give yourself some time, rest in between sets, focus on getting stronger and it, it's going to work out for you. I'd love to hear where you're at, Tim, in the next like three to four months. So circle back with this if you can. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely would. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been, I've been knocking around the idea of, of getting into the forum and, and I actually just ordered, um, I just ordered after the Stephen Cabral episode. I was like, man, I, I haven't been able to, to tolerate eggs for about about 12 years. And uh, we had sushi the other night and I think it had spicy mayo on it. Well, mayo is egg, right? And now I think that it's gotten to the point where now I'm, I'm like, well, now I can't have mayo, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that really with that episode was was key and i know we you guys talk about it all the time and i figure if i listen to it enough right it'll eventually sink in <laughs> and i don't remember if it was adam or justin at one point, you know, that was like i'll say it a different way and it's going to click right so yeah all right. cool yeah. hey yeah definitely do that well I, mean, I tell you what doug will throw you in the forum too so we'll put you in the forum so you're in there and we have we have connection with you so he'll, he'll send you access to that thanks for calling you in, got Tim. it man right on guys thank you have a great day thank you, you too, Jim. yeah that yeah. uh <clears throat> What's your favorite thing to say about group training? <laughs> yeah. They need to die. It, so. Yeah, it just uh, well, it just is not. It got them in there, right? It's again, it was yeah. sort of I mean, a that's stepping the, stone. That's the argument. But there. the transition to go from it's that tough. to traditional strength training, you feel like you're you, not doing anything. Yeah, no, you weigh it out because now you have to sort of uh, reverse engineer that mentality and completely do a new playbook. Yeah. But it'll yeah. work. It'll work yeah. for him. He just has to, it's the mental part that's the, hard. The, the, you know, the the sad part, the positive thing I have to say about Orsay is it's a great business. So it's smart because it, right. it gets a lot of people. I mean, that's the part that is smart about Orange Theory. The, the the modality of training for most people is just, it's just not ideal. You know, the only other person I see, like, I love, like, Brendan is a, a person who I think can do it, right? You're an athlete. You're already in great shape. He doesn't need to change body composition doing that kind of athletic training yeah. all the time. Sure, it's that's kind of fine. maintenance at that point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sure, yeah. it's fine. But somebody who's trying to make body composition change, I just, it's a terrible strategy. Mm -hmm. It's not a long-term, it's not a winning strategy. And just because you can show me somebody who has lost a bunch of weight, well, show me that person in yeah. three to five years. If the years. value of the workout is how hard it is, there's a problem. That's yeah. a red flag. Right. Yeah. Our next caller is Mark from Canada. Mark, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, this is really exciting. Uh, I'm not going to lie. The three of you are probably the most famous people I've ever met. So that's fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Deal yeah, Mr. Real deal yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. So uh, the question that I have... It's a kind of a series of questions, and I'll try to summarize my uh, letter here as best I can. Is um, so currently I'm doing five to, uh, five sets of twelve to fifteen reps of uh, zercher squats, stiff leg deadlifts, bent over rows, and incline uh, dumbbell presses. I've also added in uh, suspension trainer seated pull ups, um, and I also train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu four four to five sessions a week. Uh, and Muay Thai, uh, two or three sessions a week. Oh, shit. And so I'm trying to understand, like, am I overeating, undereating, um, you know, trying to do like, I'm trying to work on the reverse dieting thing. So I'm usually around 35 to 4,000 calories a day. Um, and I'm definitely hitting 280 to 300 grams of protein a day. Cause I, I, I've been tracking nonstop since May and, um, so I weigh around, I weigh 200, well, this morning, 297 pounds. Um, and I'm just trying to, like, I don't, 
think I look any leaner. And I'm just trying to see if, if I'm doing this right. Um, and my big concern is losing losing strength because of Brazilian jiu-jitsu because it's super important at heavyweight um, and and not putting on too much fat. And so also trying to understand, like, would a suspension trainer be a good kind of alternative to the two uh, weight training sessions a week? Like do one weight, one suspension trainer. So, yeah, I've got, I've got all sorts of questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. too, too hmm. much, Mark. Yeah, you're doing too much. Too much. Real, real, uh, real quick. What's your target uh, body weight? I mean, you're you're a big dude. How tall are you? And and do you, uh, six one. So you're six one. Do you have a target body weight? Like, if you were to if you were to say like I want to weigh this much, this would be a good you know athletic or whatever body weight for me. Sure, uh, two seventy five is kind of what I'm thinking. Like a solid twenty five pounds down. Okay, uh, would keep me still in that heavyweight. I could probably go lower. And 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 well, and, and I guess that's the that's really the fundamental question is is I is like I. I want to cut down, but I, I need to kind of maintain that strength. And it just, yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, I'm, with jujitsu, you're competing in weight classes. So, uh, uh, it's strength to weight ratio is what you're looking for. Not. Yeah. But once he's total over, strength, but he's a heavyweight, heavyight, so it yes. doesn't matter. Right. Well, no, well, at this point it's in the heavyweight. unlimited, right. It goes above. That's what I mean. Like, unlimited. Yes, but my point is if you were to go below into another weight class, mm -hmm. it's really strength to weight ratio. That's important. Uh, but I would aim for protein in grams for your target body weight, not for your current body weight. So if your target body weight is 275, I wouldn't go above 270 or 275 for grams of protein. As far as training is concerned, you're training a, a lot. lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do more than one day a week of strength training, maybe four exercises, and that's it. But, you know, Four or five days a week of jiu-jitsu, yeah. two, three days a week of Muay Thai. Anything more than one day a week of moderate intensity, basic strength training is 100% going to be too much for sure. Yeah. So unless right. you want to back off on some of the other training, um, then your goal with the strength training really is just to maintain joint health, hmm. prevent injuries, and maintain strength. Uh, it's going to be really hard to gain strength with strength training while training as much as you are with jujitsu and, and Muay Thai. Are you are you doing MMA? Um, is this prepping for MMA? Or are you just like doing both out of fun? No, um, I. I was doing, I was competing a lot, uh, years ago and now I coach. And so I just, it's part of my like day to day routine, right. Is, you know, I, I go to the gym, I do Muay Thai, I, I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I, I'm in my forties now. So I, I'm not doing any Muay Thai competition, uh, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm, I'm trying to strive to get to that purple belt day <laughs> one day. And, uh, you know, and so I, I really am just trying to stay as, as active and as healthy as I can. I've got lots, I've got young kids and I'm trying to make sure that I'm, that I'm just in good shape. You know, uh, I'm a what, you, strong believer in, in being able to, sorry, go ahead. Mark, you, you said, did I hear you right? 3,500 to 4,000 calories. Is that how many calories you're at? That's what I'm at. And that's like, is that enough? Is that too much? Like, is that where I'm running into issues? Well, I think like, where you're, I think where you're running into issues more than anything else is just the overtraining. I think that's a lot. You're you're putting a lot of demand on your body, and you're trying to ask it to do something for you, and it's just it's you're working against it instead of with it. So I think that's just uh, what it is. I think it's it's hard for us to say like, oh, that's too much. That's not enough. It sounds like a potentially good place to be calorie wise. My question is though, in the thirty five hundred to four thousand, are you good at getting through Whole Foods, or do you eat out a lot? What is your what is no, no, it's, it's nine. I would say I'm well into the 90% of whole foods. Oh, good. Um, good. I just, I eat, I don't eat out very often. It's the, you know, one, you know, the wife and I have a date night once a month, maybe where I'll eat out. Um, I even avoid, um, you know, when my staff and stuff like that want to go out for, for lunches and that sort of stuff, I'm typically not involved in that. So I, I'm very cognizant of trying to eat as healthy as I can. Yeah, you're, you're, I think you're, I mean, I, like I said, I would look at protein, keep it around 270, uh, over the, over that is, I mean, not bad, but probably a waste and could take away from things like carbs and fats, but you're doing too much training. Even when you look at like top level competitors, okay. And you look at their competition schedule. A lot of times people look at a competition workout schedule and say, oh, that's how I should train. Even top level athletes and top member with top level athletes at high levels, jujitsu or otherwise, right? People who compete and win tournaments and that stuff. You're also looking at a self selection bias of somebody who has better recovery genetically, somebody who has better resilience. They've obviously been training for a long time, so they've got you know, but they've got that combination of good genetics on top of it. Even those people don't train like that all the time. They train like that to get ready for competition. 
So, uh, you know, like, like I said, with, with four or five days a week of jujitsu, and I know how, I know how demanding jujitsu is. I've done a little bit of Muay Thai. I know how demanding that is. One day a week of strength training is, is plenty. And literally, yeah. literally trying to figure out where to fit. That you're doing, in. you're doing four <laughs> exercises. You're going to go to the gym and do four lifts, three to four lifts max. Yeah. And you're going to keep the intensity moderate Just to stimulate the muscles. and you're going to keep the reps lowish. I wouldn't go high reps because that's too much volume. I would keep the reps around six to eight. I wouldn't lift to failure. I would just go and practice the lifts and get out. Um, that's going to complement your, your training, but any more than that, you're, you're redlining. You're just going to over, you're doing yeah. too much. So, so then should I go into a cut, I guess is really the fundamental question. You know, I've, I've heard, I've heard Adam say before, like guys that are like super heavy, we just, we don't even bother with reverse dieting or any of that. We just cut and go like start, start cutting. Should, should I start doing that? I guess is kind of the question. I mean, it depends. I, I do, I am trying to get a little bit of, I want to bring down my body fat percentage, right? Yeah. Um, if you did, or, if you did, I would make it a very mild cut. Yeah. I would not make it an aggressive cut. I would look at my total food intake and I would like maybe cut, uh, let's say one of my meals in half in terms of the, the size and then just start there, you know, a couple hundred calories and just slowly do a cut because you're, you're you really want to maintain your strength. So you want to do it in a very slow kind of way. And I honestly think if you did the strength training, the way I said, you're probably going to get stronger. Yeah. So, and that's, I want to add to that. So I really wouldn't do much different now that you're going to get advice from us right now. Cause if you just came from say training three days a week of late, late training, and then all that Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu, and just scaling you back to one day a week, scaling back the intensity, you actually might start to build a little bit of muscle, speed the metabolism up, and kind of naturally lean out a little bit just from that advice. Mm -hmm. I would first kind of make that adjustment for a couple of weeks, see how you feel, what's going on with your body, and see if you notice strength getting up, see if you notice waistline coming in a little bit. You might already be on the right track there. Then I would go, okay, let me drop my calories, say three, you know, three, 400 calories from there and see what happens. But I would first take the original advice of just, cutting back on the strength training and the volume that might already start to get because my guess right now of why you're kind of your body fat and weight is staying where it's at is you're just yeah. throwing it's so recovery. much yeah your body is throwing so much at it, you're just enough. giving it enough calories to basically survive and maintain all the abuse it's taking and so you're really not optimizing what you're doing by feeding the body yeah. appropriately and resting are you getting good sleep too on top of this what does that look like uh, I've got a two and a half, two, two and a half year olds. I have a set of twins. So, oh, wow. um, sometimes no. it's disruptive. It's <laughs> okay. That answers uh, <laughs> yeah, another yeah, factor. Yeah. 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 Which right. is like, like so, another three days a week yeah, of training. So <laughs> more workout class. Starving for recovery here. Yeah. Is what it sounds like. Yeah. Me. I think so too. I think your body just needs, a, it needs a little bit more. Right. I mean, if you could, I would ask you to try and scale one of those one of those jujitsu days yep. or Muay Thai yeah, days back or a little bit. Just focus too. on one of them for a while. I know that's a you know easy thing to say for us, but are you uh, do you do them on the same day or are they different days? Uh, they're on different days. So uh, well, uh, one day a week is uh, same day. Uh, so like my Tuesday is a uh, is a jujitsu session and then a Muay Thai session at night. That's a lot yeah. of training, man. I, I would I would scale I would scale a lot of that back. I wouldn't do more than. I would not do more than four days a week of, 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 of combined combined. Yeah. You know, if jujitsu is your main focus, then just do four days a week of jujitsu. If, if you don't, if you want to maintain some of the Muay Thai, I'd go three jujitsu, one Muay Thai mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll feel like better. That. And you're still only one day of strength you, training, by the way. Yeah, That's you know. how much we think you're yeah. overdoing it is that even if you scaled back on the Muay Thai and the jujitsu to four days, we still would say only one day of lifting and that same, that recommendation. Yeah. That's how far you'll over feel I stronger, you'll... faster and your body will change. Yeah. I mean, why not give it that for three weeks? I mean, and just see what happens. I, I would love, I would love to like, don't even really fuck with calories that much. Literally just do what we said, scale back on the amount of uh, jujitsu and, uh, and Muay Thai one day of strength training with moderate intensity. And just let's see what happens to the body in three weeks. We'll put you in the forum. So we can keep an, we can keep an eye on you. And then I'd love to hear your feedback after three weeks of taking that advice and tell us what you're, what you're noticing. Okay. Absolutely. That would be great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you guys. That's, that's really awesome. I, I really appreciate it. I, I had kind of a sense that this was going to kind of be the answer of yeah. calm mm -hmm. down a little, but you know, I, I thought maybe I could just like use enough calories to kind of make no, up the no. difference. And 
No. You know, no, you know that's a that's a that's an unfortunate bodybuilding saying. Is yeah. that, so stupid. There's bodybuilders. There's no that, such thing as un- overtraining. Yeah, there's just, only under eating. That's right. Okay. That's a, and it's a terrible, stupid. you know, steroided out person would say something like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you were hyper hopped up on a bunch of anabolics and growth hormone, it's and not all even the, true then. Yeah, even then yeah, it's not true. Yeah, but still, it's only then you could you almost get away with it. Get away with something like that. But yeah, we're gonna keep an eye on you, Mark. So join the forum. Doug will send you a link to that, and then uh, take that advice for at least give us at least three weeks, and let's and let's let's like yep. revisit how you're feeling, and then we can go from there. Absolutely, that's that's awesome. Thank you guys so very much. I really appreciate it. You got it, man. All right, Mark. right on, brother. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good one. You got it. That saying should be more like: "There's no such thing as overtraining. There's only under eating and not taking enough anabolics." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if yeah. you're overtrained and eat more and take more anabolics, then yeah, you'll feel, yeah. Like, no, you'll totally. feel better. That makes I, more sense. Yeah, he, people need to realize this. Like, th- this is what happens: they look at top level athletes or competitors in their gym. They go to jujitsu and like, "Oh, that's so and so. He won the U.S. Open, or they're really good, or whatever." Then they ask them, "Well, how do you train? How did you train for this tournament?" Like, "Oh, I've been I jujitsu five or six days a week, and then I." And so then they emulate it. Oh Even top athletes, people who are on the spectrum of genetics when it comes to recovery and adaptation are like, you know, way different than the average person. Even they don't train like that all the time. They train like that in season. And if you look at the injury rate in season in comparison to off season, it's astounding. It's, it's, you explode and they need an off season to let their bodies catch Just up. Well, again, we're talking about genetically gifted people. Well, yeah. also keep in mind too, you're you're asking a body composition question in addition to all that too. Yeah. It would be different if he's just like, I want to be the best at jujitsu. Well, yeah. then maybe, keep going, bro. Yeah. Get rid of the weight truck. Get rid yeah, of the weight truck. Stop Muay Stop, stop. Just do jujitsu. Just get hella good at it. And yeah. just, and okay, I'm okay with you doing five, six, seven days a week at it. Just getting good at your sport. You don't care to lose 20 pounds. You're not trying to build any right. muscle or strength. You just want to get good at your craft. Fucking practice it more. But if you say things to me like, hey, I'd like to lose 20 to 30 pounds in addition to I want to get good at these two different... Well, okay, well, now we're we're asking the body to do a lot and body composition change and getting good at a sport are conflicting. Doesn't mean they're impossible to accomplish both. Yeah. It just means they're conflicting. And so it takes a very delicate balance of... How do I do just the right amount of this training so I don't lose my skills? How do I eat the right amount of calories? How do I eat the right amount of calories so I'm not putting on a bunch of bad way, but yet feeding myself so I can actually recover from the sport that I'm doing? Like yeah. it's a delicate dance that you're asking to do. Most people overshoot. They think more is better and that that's going to get them faster. And almost everybody I ever talked to that is trying to juggle both of these are just doing way more than they need to. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our fitness and health guides. They're all free, and many of them can help you get more muscle and burn more body fat. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam.